Well, it is promotional Saturday here in the SPL promotion tournament. As we try to get to figure out, at least later on today, who our first of our 10 teams that came in this weekend get to punch their ticket and stamp their way into the Smite Pro League. Before we do that, we got to go through a couple of elimination matches. We got a couple of best of threes today, and then a single best of five later on to kind of wrap out our day. If you are unfamiliar with how this tournament has been playing out so far, we'll give you a quick recap. As far as the format of the tournament, we brought 10 teams in at the beginning of the week over on Wednesday to start things out. We've been playing nonstop best of threes for every single day from Wednesday up until now in a double elimination bracket style. Where today and tomorrow, we'll figure out what two teams we're we'll promoting into the Smite Pro League. And all of these have been starting up at 11 a.m. Eastern, just like today. And tomorrow, we'll be starting at the exact same time. So make sure that you don't miss out on that. We can also take a look at the bracket if you have missed out on the event up until this point, or maybe if you even just need a quick refresher as to everything that's gone through so far. We have eliminated four of our 10 teams already, those being the Tartarus Titans, the Athenian Sages, Shibalba Storm, and the Yomi Tanuki, the latter of those two removed from the bracket just yesterday. We also got to watch some of our upper bracket matchups yesterday. Niflheim Wargs and Aru Scorpions faced off. That goes a 2-0 for the Wargs. Same with the Elder Towns and the Gilded Gladiators. Now we'll get to have the Niflheim Wargs and the Hounds facing off for our very first promotional match. That one will be a best of five, but that'll be our last match of the day. Instead, we're going to be turning our sights over towards the Aru Scorpions and the Valhalla Valkyries in a best of three, and the Gilded Gladiators and the Kowloon Wardens another. Best of three, both of those elimination matchups. And for some of these teams out here, Myth, I mean, we look at the Valhalla Valkyries, at least as a squad. This is one of the lower seeded teams out there, at least since the bottom four, have really kind of maybe surprised a lot of fans at home and even maybe surprised some of us here in the studio. I I've been surprised mainly by their unwillingness to go towards standard hunters, but still seeing such massive success throughout the tournament. Warchi, I believe we saw like one Mage ADC game, didn't look so great, and he said since then. Well, let's play some Assassins. Generally, that set, though, has been serving him very well. A team that has found their identity in that it's W key, run it down style. Not exactly an objective focused team, one that more so plays for the kills. But if they're killing you, it's pretty hard to avoid that Titan falling eventually. Yeah, the Valhalla Valkyries have just refused to play pretty much anything that is ranged over in the dual lane except for the, the one single. Agni carry game that we can probably go ahead and, and right away from that hunter. point. It was a, it was just a it, mage. Yeah, it wasn't even a magical hunter. It was just a mage that got played there. But other than that, it has been purely assassins, at least over in the dual lane, and also a lot of assassin play in the jungle from Worst Turtle himself. It has been quite the performance that this team in general has had, but maybe also kind of brings up an interesting kind of back and forth with this squad, Mifflin, the fact that the jungler of this team, Worst Turtle, kind of has to share a god pool with his carry player, Warchi. Not something that we typically talk about, but Wurstertle's been able to get it done with the picks that he's been left with. Yeah, and Wurstertle's got his favorite selections occasionally when Thor is available. Seems like that's been snap-locked, not just by Wurstertle, but by m majority of junglers at this event. Uh, as far as shared god pool, I mean, the assassin pool is so powerful, and the meta assassin jungles feels like they're not exactly the ones that Warchi's taking for himself. Maybe some of these junglers want to play set. I'm not so certain. Haven't seen it a whole lot, even in the last couple of years. But if that's the case, I, I think Worst Turtle just has to eat that L. Let Warchi have it, because that has looked so much better for him. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of the kind of facilitator style of jungle, but also just some of the hard burst style of jungle coming from Worst Turtle. The Susanos come to mind as well. We have been seeing the Naja, though that thing goes most often over to Warchi whenever that one kind of is left available. So it's kind of interesting to see how this team goes through, and I wonder if they're going to still continue to kind of hold that style of play. They haven't changed all the way up until this point. I don't imagine up against the Aru Scorpions you want to necessarily fully change up your game plan from what you've been going with so far. No, but I wouldn't be surprised if they've got maybe a little bit something else in the back pocket, right? You, you can't get through the entire tournament with that one style of play, is what I'd like to say, but so far they've done a very good job of it. Maybe if the Aru Scorpions have done their homework, they might be able to limit some of these more eclectic picks. It's been a lot of consistency so far from the Valhalla Valkyries, and we've got a chance to sit by and talk to their jungler. It's Worst Turtle standing by for our pregame interview. Yeah, that's right. I've got Worst Turtle here, and I'm actually going to touch on something they were talking about. Y you have been playing, your team has been playing a lot of double assassin. Is it fun, frustrating? Like, what, what, what is it like knowing that Warchi's kind of encroaching on your own god pool? Uh, it feels great to play with an assassin in the hunter role, because... It's like makes my job easier because he ha he does half the job that I, have to, that I normally have to do because normally I just have a hunter sitting back in the back lane but with Warchi it just enables me even more. 
Thank you. So makes your job easier, right? Makes yeah. it feel a little bit better. Uh, you guys are going up against the Scorpions, and like you've played this team a lot, right? I mean, over the the last like year plus at this point, like whether it's in ranked or whether it's competitive, like you've found yourself and your team has found themselves against them. What kind of prep do you do against a team that you know this well? Well, it's, yeah, like you said, the, this team's a fully new team that we know very well. Mm -hmm. So the prep's like easier because not only we, like we've seen them the entire year and we play against them the entire year. My boy Davis in, in another team is going to be tough to send them home, but <laughs> I'll have to do it, so whatever. Well, hey, I like the confidence immediately. I, I do want to ask, because we've been seeing a lot of, of a lot of gods so far this week. Has there been any one god pick that has stood out to you where you're like, oh, wow, that's getting locked in? I mean, uh, the mages, right? There are so <laughs> there's so many of them. There's like Tiamat, and then you have Merlin. So yeah, so many, so many mages. And about the the fucking the picks, I haven't repeated the the god I got yet. I still wow. have to repeat the god. I uh, played seven games this tournament, so let's see if I can keep that going. Yeah, one god per game, right? It's gonna be exciting. I'm excited to watch it. Good luck in your games, man. Thank you. Thanks for your time. We'll send this back to the desk. It's actually an, inter an interesting stat that got brought up by him. It's seven games and seven different gods throughout those games. Not a single repeat from Worst Turtle so far in the jungle. And it's kind of crazy to believe with how many assassins have been consistently banned away from the squad. I mean, we looked at the set yesterday, and in game number one, there were, if you include what was picked and banned, and if you're including Al Kwong as an assassin, there were 11 of them in a single game that either got banned away or picked, the majority of those obviously being a ban. So seeing the fact that he hasn't had to repeat any of those guys he's got a chance to play something new every single time is probably a really fun stat to look at uh it is and if he's going to keep that i suppose trend up i don't know where he goes from here right seven selections already has shown a propensity to lock in some of those mages maybe hebo out of the jungle could be something you keep your eyes on but he's got some tough competition on the other side in, in sarpay i'm not so certain that he, sarpay would allow some of these slower paced junglers that that worst turtle has been going towards to really uh, spool up towards that mid to late game that Al Kong in particular one of his best looks worst throw though that is I think could struggle against the the standard assassin selections of Sarpe things like Thor have been absolutely dominant for this guy get involved early rock those Jotun's Hydra's builds and, and just make his stamp known on the map but as far as jungle pacing and positioning and where they like to play on the map I would say both worst turtle and Sarpe Generally, duo-focused junglers really like to get involved around level 3, get over towards that shield buff. Uh, I've been noticing a whole lot of scrapping on that side of the map. And if that's going to be a continued trend, you'd think Worser will probably want to match some of that early game presence. Yeah, well, let's see. Cause, I mean, Sarpe for sure ha has been a power player for this Aww. team. I look over at things like the Thor that Sarpe has got his hands on too many times this tournament. has absolutely dominated the map in that regard. So I wonder how much of the kind of first phase of bands will, will really be delegated towards both of these jungle players in general, whether that be just a, a general assassin ban, because there's well, two players on the side uh, of at least the Valkyries who are playing that one, and then Sarpe on the opposite end there. But I'm also wondering maybe where the, the remainder of the Scorpions kind of drafts kind of go. Remember, this is a, one of those teams that is kind of being sought as a potential team to make it up to the Smite Pro League. I didn't see too many bag of tricks come out for these guys, but it is an elimination match. You, you kinda gotta start pulling out of the stops from here on. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, the top four, top five seeded teams, it's not so much, what are our flavor picks? What are the weird stuff we're doing? It's they're very capable of playing all the meta selections. Not only is it strong because those are meta for a reason, they're just really good with the current itemization, but it also takes away from your opposition's god pool. I think that could be a major strength that the Aru Scorpions can lean on, the ability to just play the standard, the magical hunters, the things that have been eating four or five bands every single game. Because of Warchi's insistence on assassins out of the jungle or out of the duo lane, it might leave open some of those priority picks that the Aru Scorpions have had banned away from them so consistently. If the Scorpions decide, hey, we could just leave every single magical hunter up, it's pretty likely that they get one, and it's pretty unlikely that Warchi strays away from his standard. Yeah, the magical hunters are definitely something that we don't get to see from the Valhalla Valkyries whenever they play, so maybe an option for the Scorpions to try and find some way back through there. Freya has kind of been the top of the picks whenever left open. It seems that of the Magical Hunters, she's the one that has been reigning supreme yeah, as far as those picks are concerned, and then a little bit more soul. We've been seeing a bit more Ola run than we were at the beginning of the week. If we look kind of back towards you know our first few days, Wednesday and Thursday, I think we only had a single Ola run game where he was actually picked. Many games where he was left open if he wasn't banned through, but maybe not quite that same priority. And maybe in the same regard of Kronos, who haven't really seen a whole lot of him this tournament. 
despite how powerful some of his stuff goes through. But we're going to see how things shake up in the picks and bans for game number one between the Aru Scorpions and the Valhalla Valkyries. Now, I'm going to keep my eye on War Turtle and see what he does end up picking. Remember, seven games, seven different gods. I'll go ahead and ring them out for you real quick. It was Kamazots, yep. Ravin, yep. Mercury, uh -huh. Alquong, Thor, Susano, and Nemesis were his seven. Don't worry, I've got a list of here, so I'll, I'll be able to see if we get something new from him in this right. But immediately, something that we have been seeing after the performance that Warchi had just a couple days ago on the set, doesn't seem that any team is going to want to give that one up to him. Yeah, and I think they're right to do it. Warchi just looks leagues above what he was playing on, on this set pick. It, it just really elevates that lane bully, allows him to rotate in towards these team fights. Uh, we saw him just gunning down just about anybody on the other side. It, it, it was absolutely wild the amount of dive that Warchi was able to supply and I, I think it goes Go to show forth, that Warchi shares that hey my job is just land. a little bit easier because someone else is doing the dive for me makes him uh, uh, allowed to play as a solo agent in some of these team fights something else Worst Turtle had alluded to was the massive mage selections that we've seen huge, huge mage huge god pool Tiamat Merlin so far it's just Tiamat for the Aru Scorpions in first slot now on the opposite end Achilles being hovered for the Valkyries, and that is something that Nil it's has been running amok battle. within the solo in lane. I believe favor. the last four games that Nil has played has been on this Achilles, and it's been a strong performance every single time for him. And alongside the Achilles will be an Athena lock, and something we saw a little bit at the beginning of the week, haven't seen very much of since then. How do you kind of feel about the top two so far for the Valkyries? I'm not so certain that Athena is such a priority selection that you need to grab it this early in the draft. Especially with the other priority guardians off the table, feels like you could have, if you really want to get her, wait till third selection. Our scorpions haven't exactly been going towards the Athena too often, but as far as what those two bring, I think it synergizes well already. There's your dive or your initiation already set up. Achilles with the taunt or the the stun rather, Athena with the taunt confound can get these fights rolling very early. The execute to deal with some of these tankier targets. Tiamat, I would consider one of the tankiest mages in the game. Sylvanas, largely immobile, so Fatal Strike likely finds its way home My there. But you have to keep your eyes on the healing. Sylvanas can just uh, essentially meditation bait you without the meditation. Likely he will also pick up meditation too, though. So keeping them within the execute threshold, I think, going to be the priority focus of the Valkyries in some of these later game team fights. Now what assassins will we see added to the band pool for the Scorpions? It's going to be Kamazots, and then a Hades on the opposite end for the Valkyries, despite there already being a triple, a triple magical setup. We did see earlier on in the week, I believe we looked towards teams like the Yomituki that were running four magical, one physical just out of the jungle. So for now, Hades will eat a ban from the Valkyries, but where do they put the remainder of their bands? Maybe towards some stuff in the solo lane? Naja, Try and maybe. give Nil a little bit of an easier time. Naja could be an option. You want to keep that one away. You've already removed the Thor, at least on the side for the Aru Scorpion, so no need to take anything like that. Will be more soul in focus. Guan Yu gets taken away by the Valkyries and a Susano for the Aru Scorpion. So what will be the double assassin for the Valkyries this time? Will we see Worst Turtle finally duplicate a god selection in the jungle? Or will we see something new from him yet again this game? It's hard to say. I mean, looking at what the Aru Scorpions have got already... I wouldn't hate seeing him go back towards something like the Robin, the overhead kick, really good at avoiding the, the, the heavy CC of the Aru Scorpions, the stun from Tiamat, very telegraphed, Sylvanas. It's usually pretty clear to the, these high-level players when his ultimate is coming as well. <laughs> Could prevent some of that frontline dive slowing down if he did decide to go over towards the Robin. Not certain that that Loki's for him, though. Uh, if we're talking about worst turtle of the jungle, I'm not 100% certain that he wants to play something that, that is so hit-and-run focused. When I think of Worst Turtle, I, I think get in there, get involved, stay in, last first in, last out, unless he's on the Alquong, in which case it's first in, go up to the air, and then get out immediately. This Loki could be slated for Warchi out of the duo lane. We've seen duo Loki more often uh, than I would have expected coming into this event. I believe we've seen three Hunter Lokis, Manda Warrior, two of the three, has decent clear, good beads burning potential, really high 1v1 potential once the, uh, the supports start to rotate out. But it does make it so, so difficult to actually siege or look towards objectives. A new labor. I wonder. And now with Hercules on the other side as well, I mean, the disruption, the flurry strikes from Loki just never really going to ring home. Hunbots here, no evil, also simplifies the disengage. Assassinate being a, a two-pronged attack means you can just drop fear, no evil on your feet before that stun comes through. Makes it very difficult for Loki to choose his spots. 
or Scorpions. As mentioned, round out their draft with Hunbats and Hercules for the right side of the map, Jungle and Solo Lane, respectively. Now the Valkyries with one final selection. And I don't know if it'll fully answer exactly where this Loki is going just yet. We'll but figure it out. We'll find out once we once the we brain see tank this of pick. you and me. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll get there eventually. It, it, it might take us a second to kind of to kind of pick the brains for, of each other to figure out where we want to see this one go through. But so far, at least of what we know of with the R Scorpions with their team composition, how do you kind of feel uh, at least about maybe the initiation of this team? You know, I Sylvanas, unless you're going blink, probably feels like you're more low to sit in the back line. Hercules feels like a very telegraph style of initiation for this team. Do you like what the Ari Scorpions kind of have drafted out so far in their five? I do. You, you've got a front-to-back support. Sylvanas can either get involved in that front line or, or hover near the back and just make sure Tiamat and Sol aren't really taking too much pressure. Uh, and then with that being the case, you've got your initiation through Hunbots and Hercules. Sure, Hercules is a bit telegraphed. If he's Wing at you at all, every player in the game knows exactly the distance of that Herc pool because it's one of the most frustrating things to get hit by. Uh, just makes it very easy to go for that non-committal initiation, pull out these targets without putting yourself at too much risk. And then Hunbots as well with the Fear No Evil. I mean, that is just one of the best beads burning tools or even making use of burnt beads in the entirety of the game. Nemesis locked in for the Valkyries. I'm willing to say that's going to the jungle. Most Guaranteed. Likely. There's no way Warchi wants to play Nemesis in the duo lane. And speaking in absolutes has been something I've been talked to a lot about. Uh, Hindu Man tells me I keep digging myself into these holes. I'm going to do it again. There's no way <laughs> Nemesis can match clear with Soul. You don't love that 1v1. Go ahead, put him in the jungle. We know that Worst Turtle has got a pretty good performance on this pick. It's one of his favorites throughout the regular season of the entirety of last year. Fully committed. I'm locked in and in. It, it, it is Loki ADC. Like a gopher in the backyard. Just another hole for you, Myth. We'll see if you can dig your way out of this one. See if at least this one will be the Nemesis jungle. The good news is that Nemesis was actually the most recent one. That was played by Worst Turtle, so unless he is firmly standing on the I don't want to duplicate my gods, probably a safe bet to maybe assume that this nemesis will be going into his hands and a Warchi once again piloting the Loki ADC for the Valhalla Valkyries. But kind of talk to me now about how the, the Valkyries draft kind of plays out. You know, one of the things that Worst Turtle mentioned in the interview is it feels like because Warchi's doing this assassin carry style of play, it kind of makes his job a little bit easier. He doesn't have to just be that one to go in by himself while his hunter and mage are sitting back. Do you think that with this kind of composition, it kind of echoes that same sentiments? A, a bit. We've seen Loki, especially out of ADC, kind of lean into that split push style of play, just hover around the team fight. If it goes a bit long, especially these dances around Fire Giant or Gold Fury, rotate in towards a lane, try and take out a tower, then reinitiate, rejoin the fight, uh, generally going for those flanks. Uh, this is a heavy pick-based composition for the Valkyries. As far as the true five-on-five -five engagement, I just really favor the Aura Scorpions. They've got higher ease of play, AOE CC, great beads burning tools. Once they're stacked up on each other, each one of their gods have a good deal of synergy. But the Valkyries, if Loki's maneuvering the map, all of a sudden you have to worry about the assassinate defender of Olympus combo, just absolutely eviscerating HP bars. Or oh, Nemesis man. being so squishy or so slippery can really distract you around these objectives. If it gets taken to the late, it's like 30 minutes in, there's no significant lead for the Valkyries, and you're forced to a 5-on-5, five five, I think the Scorpions take this 80% of the time. It's the Aru Scorpions and the Valhalla Valkyries, an elimination best of three. It all starts here in game number one. To do that, we'll throw it over to Gore and Trelly. Thanks so much, J-Mac and Mifflin. That's right, we're jumping in to an EU matchup. One I'm really excited to watch, Trelly. Although I noted, and I was talking to you about this, a hint of betrayal that exists in the Valkyries. And that is a worst turtle. Has a scorpion tattoo on his left arm, and I didn't notice it until they were in the player booth. Uh, do you think he's secretly rooting for the other squad? I think Why I, did he get a whole tattoo for I, the other team? I think I've read that book. The boy with the scorpion tattoo. It's worse. Oh turtle. yeah, that's yeah. a that's a that's a really good. I like some of the spinoffs maybe a little more. <laughs> but like that's a that's a pretty good one. Yeah, and it just <laughs> it, it does speak of the betrayal. Maybe worst <laughs> turtle. This is his redemption arc. He wants to just take them down. And in this case, I think uh, a good god pick yeah. to do so. Some immobile characters with their escapes down. You know, like you could just use that ultimate on Preds, take him out of the fight pretty early on. Kana, once that driving strike is down, another great target. Speaking of betrayals, he like straight up lied to me, right? Like, he said like, yeah, I've played <laughs> seven different gods. We're gonna see how long well, we can keep that going. And in immediately, <laughs> to his to his credit, I don't think he was lying to you. He was hoping the scorpions were listening, and he was lying to them. You ah. were just the. 
I just happened deliver. to be the, the middleman. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, you were the way to, to get his message out. Like I swear, <laughs> I got guys, caught in the crossfire. I, I won't play Nemesis, and then they they got thrown off their game. Uh, admittedly, some of that's by decision, right? Where he's played different guns. Some of it hasn't been though, right? A lot of bands that have gone his way. Uh, J Mac had mentioned it on the desk, but the last game uh, that they played yesterday. Worst Turtles on this Nemesis. And there were actually moments that weren't going too well for them, and then Worst Turtle got a kill. They even talked about it in the post-game interview where like he, he got the first kill, and they went, oh, wait a minute, maybe we should fight. <laughs> 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 he gets the second. All of a sudden, this fight that, that was falling apart for them turns into a, a huge win. Uh, and so having that immediately feels like you are back on a pick that, that was able to turn something around big yesterday. And as you said, a lot of immobile targets, but also I see Preds, you know, Streak Up, Kana playing relatively tanky targets. And that Nimmel is really going to help shred through, like, the Tiamat, shred through the Hercules a little bit later. Yeah, they've got a ton of, of single target damage here for the Valhalla Valkyries. Uh, you, if you're looking to just execute a target, it is very easy to shred some protections, go on a tank, get them to that execute threshold, and get an early pick. Later on in the match, you're going to look towards that AoE damage with the Aru Scorpions have a lot, and I think that's why Mifflin was leaning towards the Scorpions 80% yeah. of the time, I believe he said. Once that, those team fights come through, you're looking at Fear No Evil, you're looking at a big grouping for Wrath of Terra. They, they've got some, some big CC abilities that could really cause some problems when you're grouped up around the Fire Giant in yeah. these tight corridors in the jungle. Definitely, you know, despite a loss yesterday to the Wargs, I mean, a phenomenal team, right? The Scorpions looked so good for a majority of that. And honestly, to the point where, depending on where you look at it, some of it might just be straight up veteranship. That yeah. is what beat them yesterday, yeah. right? Like, there's no reason Sam should be finding three man dunks into a triple kill while four or five <laughs> of them, like, he lost two teammates to start that fight. There's no reason it should be turning around the way it does. But then you sometimes, one, get some hero plays, but also uh, just have to deal with the world's MVP diving your back line. <laughs> there's not much you can do about it. And so definitely, I think, high hopes uh, and praises out there in the community for the Scorpions here. And, of course, I've seen a, a couple recurrences. Last year it was a huge deal. Uh, Valks to SPL on Twitter. I've seen, like, two or three of those this year so far. Uh, a couple of teams, a couple of players, a couple of people. I'm just really wanting to see uh, how far this team can push it. Talked a lot about the, the junglers. I think Sarpay on the other side is a really important factor. But, but really, I think this one can come down to team fight you had mentioned you know with the, the well, just big aoe's that the scorpions have they got circles but you know worst turtle had even mentioned this you get a loki carry yeah. and we've mentioned it over the last couple of days not necessarily the best thing when it comes down to tower pushing soul is going to absolutely demolish in that kind of de department but warchi and worst turtle had said this takes a lot of pressure off of him a lot of the things that he would need to do warchi can also do and so both of them can kind of work in tandem does that work as well when you have someone that like you know, soul who could just straight up go immune. Well, you, he's right about the double dot. You know, like yeah. if Worst Turtle's saying a jungler's sole job is to get to the back line and you know create that space, Warchi is able to do that as well. So it does take the pressure off. But where that pressure is alleviated, I think it gets enhanced when you're sieging. You know, yeah. <laughs> what's an ADC's job to take phoenixes? Are, are we seeing Warchi be able to do that consistently? As of recent, on the set. Actually, yes, and in this case, we might see the first gank of the game. Yeah, Kana in a little bit of trouble. Worst Turtle dropped the ult. He's running the wrong direction, though. Luckily, it's Hercules. Still a lot of healing, a lot of damage. Gets the dash. Sarpe. So he goes away. Sarpe's going to be here. Has yeah. ult as well. Might drop the fear, no evil. That's just for Peel. That's going to make sure that Kana walks out alive. Yeah, that's a, that's a very tanky Hercules, and those heals come through. And that also, Nil was not able to go back to base there. Kana goes back, teleports in, gets the Tier 2 breastplate. A lot of tank stats, maybe. If you get a full item online, you're able to help chase that down, but probably didn't even have the gold quite yet to finish up that regrowth. Actually just got it, so the breastplate of regrowth might have helped trying to chase that one down. Either way, no kill happening, and the Aru Scorpions actually pushed their gold lead up to about a thousand here early on with nothing more than some invades. I saw Purple Buff go down the way of Davy. They're not going to let Warchi take that one, and that's because Loki... He doesn't do much damage early on. You know, he, you can't contest with the, the ranged auto attacks of Soul. Both Bastions on the left side of the map have already been taken just by nature of these magical ADCs. Yeah, and it comes to, to factor in the Sylvanas as well. Like, That's you're true. a Loki with an Athena. <laughs> Good luck clearing the wave before a Soul Sylvanas. I mean, that is just a lot of work. Uh, and unfortunately for them, it hasn't gone their way. And like you said, now that it's cultivated into about 1,000 gold, uh, you're starting to feel maybe a foundation being built for the Scorpions. And that was a, a big factor yesterday, right? I, I mean, their farm game, even against the Wargs, was, was incredibly solid. But you had mentioned the invades. 
Uh, and I think it was Leon who, who had said it, and we had kind of repeated it a couple of times. But at the end of the day, it's still Smite. So, and yep. We hadn't been seeing as many invades, but you can walk up to that blue. You can just go take the blue. If you can walk up to the purple, you can just take the purple. You can see now Davian Preds immediately setting up for this. And since the buff camps don't leash as far, they can just kind of take it wherever they need to. Preds gets taunted in, but I think Rotwin even recognizes there's not much they can do here. So at this point, you're kind of hunkering down. You're two levels down already if you're Warchi. That's going to hurt if any fights happen on the left-hand side. If we see an early Gold Fury, the Valkyries just don't have as much punch on, on that side. No, definitely not. And, th and that's sort of the way you want to play Loki early on, especially when you know you're getting out-pressured. It, it, honestly, if I'm playing Loki, I'm probably pairing it with a more aggressive support. It's all well and good that Rotwin can dash it and taunt, but ta taunting into what? In this case, some some decoy damage from Orgy, right? He's yeah. not going to be committing an ultimate, not when Supernova is available, not when he doesn't have that much follow-up. So it, it's going to be AFK simulator on the left side of the map, <laughs> clear some waves. Hopefully, if, if, you know, if Davey overstays his welcome, War Turtle comes through, helps out. But I'm thinking Rotwin has this ultimate to be able to join those solo ganks, you know, look for an execute on the right side of the map towards Kana whenever Worst Turtle actually makes it over, because there's not too much kill potential here. But Worst Turtle seems to try to want to force something. A lot of healing, a lot of CC. He's going to back off for now. Doesn't have the same impact, right? If that taunt's not there, like, I mean, I, what, are, what are they using to Ooh. start that fight? They get Warchi low! Wisps. The damage is there, but the Wisps are not going to be enough. No, they're taking for Slowly 20 right now. <laughs> he gets low, uh, but no one's there to follow it up. Maybe... A different story in mid. Worst Turtle kind of caught between Streak Up and Sarpe. But it's not going to be the go button from the Hunbats, so they're going to play it patiently. Instead, they're going to look for something maybe a little more lucrative. First Blood Bounty, that's pretty nice. Gold Fury could be worth more. They see Rotwin walk up, and even though the steel potential's not there, they don't feel like they have enough to take it seven minutes in. Instead, it's going to be a little bit of a wash. Petrelli. And the time that they've been, been second-guessing whether or not they were going to go for a Gold Fury or maybe attempting some of these first bloods, it's still another 1,000 gold that the Scorpions have picked up. They're, they're sitting just over 2,200. Yeah, it's a lot of attempt at confirming their own buffs, but the Valks are not fighting for these buffs. And in that case, you're going to be falling behind slowly but surely. doesn't seem like they're going to stop anytime soon. Uh, once Warchi gets a second item, maybe you're in a position where you can try and throw some abilities towards Davy, get a Relic down and then try and fight for your purple buff, but at the moment, too much sustain. There's no Brawler's Beat Stick built just yet. That's a level 6 Loki. At this rate, Davey's going to double that level. You know, it's, it doesn't seem like it's going to be stopping anytime soon. You see where Turtle rotate over. He's trying to help his ADC, but there is just no kill potential. So it's just slowly get behind. We already saw the Aru Scorpions. They want to put pressure towards this Gold Fury. They pulled it once just to sort of see, like, a damage check. How long will it take the Valhalla Valkyries to respond? Wouldn't be surprised if we saw some wards down and in a, a full-on commit. That Supernova's got some great confirm. We've been looking back and forth on this map. Sol has been quiet. Uh, that one gank earlier on Nakana, where he just kind of walks his way out of there, uh, a little bit of help from Sarbe. I have to give credit where credit's due. Otherwise, it's been very silent. You know, there's been talks, uh, at least throughout this week, that we've seen some junglers focusing very early on the duo lane, right? How is it a 2v2 if your jungler's hanging out over there the entire time, making sure that you're, for lack of a better term, babysat in the way that you need to to get well, ahead? that's what I call it. Uh, or the opposite, where it's been only focused on solo lane. Hey, we're going to gank this guy five times, even if it only gets us two kills. And so far, we've kind of been seeing, uh, I want to say, almost a lack of that jungle presence. Yes, we've seen Worst Turtle kind of poke his head in on left, definitely poke his head in on right, but... Otherwise, it's been a very quiet game. Yeah, and that, that's in favor of the Scorpions. As we said earlier on, the, the team fight is always in favor of the Scorpions until much later, assuming Warchi can stealth into the jungle and just one-shot someone. So until they get to that point, the Scorpions are fine with this pace. I mean, they're just going to continuously outfarm, wait until late game, wait until they've got an item advantage, maybe an item and a half advantage, and then make these pulls. So it is on the Valhalla Valkyries to try and stop the pace at which the Ardu Scorpions have set. I'm looking around, right? You, you, you immediately look towards Nil. There's an execute. That seems to be the easiest way to find a kill. Yeah. Because you don't have to actually kill them. You just give them a 30% HP. And at this point, Kana seems unkillable, right? You pop that regrowth, you're running away. You don't care too much about the slow from Worst Turtle. Maybe if that next item is a Brawler's, you get some extra anti-heal online, and then you can possibly look towards, especially if you get that ulted from Rotwin. That's plenty of CC. 
to try and lock down this Hercules. But look at this. Davy is just taking the tower. There's two back. This is the full duo lane here. It does not matter. No one is stopping the duo lane of the Aru Scorpion. And honestly, maybe one of the fastest towers we've seen this week, just in general. A lot of them have been get the Bastions, then start getting neutral farm, and then like eventually you can start looking at them. Maybe you'll knock down a tier one in mid. Maybe it may be a tier one in right. But to get the dual lane, that's a big deal. Nice knock up, nice pull, and grabs Rotwin locked down. Not able to get the defender of Olympus off, and Davy's gonna get first blood. Yeah, Preds doesn't miss those. That's the first pull I've even seen him go for, but unfortunately for Rotwin, beautiful CC chain. Actually defended, I mean, uh, I was gonna say channel defender Olympus. Tried to defend Olympus, but got stuck. Too much damage coming the way of that Athena. That's gonna be first blood going the way of Davy. This soul is gonna be a big problem. I mean, already has a massive level lead. Now the gold is starting to pile up in the duo lane's favor. Next time that happens, gold fury should be looked at. But having a 4 to 5k gold lead without any objective so far is a little bit absurd. I mean, being able to, like you said, pick this up. I'll give him a little bit of credit. 500 gold from the tier 1 tower, right? <laughs> you at least got a little bit uh, from the map. 4,000 gold. Yep. 11 minutes into this game, the Valkyries are fighting uphill. But Trelli, it's always the experience as well. You gotta look at it. I mean, one level down in solo, not a big deal. Matching in jungle and mid. Duo lane, both down two entire levels. And so you're getting definitely a, a much bigger impact from Preds and Davy here than what you're getting out of Rotwin and Warchi. I mean, even itemization. You, you, it's not often that you get to see the supports have this big of a lead, but you actually have a finished tier three for Preds while Rotwin's maybe still working on it. And with Davy rotating over, you don't need any other kills. I mean, they're they're seceding the tower uh, almost instantly once the the group just steps up. And it seems almost impossible for the Valkyries Another to fight pull. back. It's not going to stop them. Nice pull, nice fear, no evil, and poor Rotwin just bullied down into the ground. I'm surprised they're not going for a fury or the tower. I mean, Preds is on point. That's just it. Right? He's got Rotwin's number. Beautiful pull. This time, fear no evil goes down before Defender of Olympus can even be channeled. Does not seem like it's going to stop anytime soon. Tier 1 certainly falls here. What happens next? So you can see Warchi is actually making the rotation mid, maybe trying to find a kill, but he's just going to go in, try and grab a bead. Sarpe will use it, but here comes the fall. That might be what they need. Worst Turtle gets the slow. Good taunt. Sarpe pulled back in, and finally one lashed back for the Valkyries. They look for more. They slow down Preds, but this tower is still standing. Streak up still there. Still has a lot of damage. Rotwin might be in trouble. Dash gets him out of there. Kana's rotated blink. in, blink forward, looking for the knockup, finds it on Ray Shadow, beads used. The Merlin gets to walk away. It's a one pickup here for the Valkyries. Yeah, they're able to answer that one back. It's a beautiful rotation for Morgi. This is really the only time that Loki's going to be able to do something in lane, not so much. Rotate out quickly with a great follow-up bolt there from Rotwin onto Worst Turtle, and you get the chase down. You grab the beads from Sarpe and the kill, and it looks like trying to fight at the Pyromancer. This is a smart call. Numbers advantage to the Valkyries, and they're going to pick this one up. Trying to fight it. Pyromancer's getting low. Valkyries secure that one, but what is it going to cost? Nil gets pulled back in. Doesn't seem to be under too much pressure, so the Valkyries get it. Haven't picked up the Runic Bomb just yet. That is a small victory in the face of things that have been going all ways of the Scorpions. But you know what's the most scary is the fact that Davy didn't rotate out. I mean, the most fed soul, the level 14 soul, has not left tower or this lane at all. I mean, Warchi had to make that rotation. It was massive for the Valks. They get their kill. They get their Pyromancer. But I think if Davy's there, maybe that fight goes a little bit differently. Gold Fury is pulled and confirmed by the Aru Scorpion, so they're going to be able to match the Pyromancer over on right and continue just pushing that lead. It was about, like, 4.4 before that fight. Valkyries get their first kill on a pyro, and still it grows to 5.2. The Aru Scorpions are still <laughs> finding that gold. Uh, on the chart, the Pyromancer was such a small dip. It's such a small blip on that graph. A little bit more maybe in the experience side, so you can actually see where it happens. But unfortunate for the Valkyries, picking up something I think so important. Not getting the Runic Bomb as well. I mean, it, you know, we've been talking a lot about it throughout the weekend, whether you want to talk about it for, for objectives or god play, but towers and the capability to just go up 1k straight to any of these true damage, tier 1s or tier 2s, would have been a really, really nice way for the Valkyries to start to claw their way back in. And so unfortunate for them not having that in the inventory to maybe use and further their agenda on the map. Instead, my eyes turned to Worst Turtle. Yesterday, in rough spots for this team, this was the jungler, this was the player. 
that was able to turn a lot around. It's hanging out over here on right. Davy seemed like they might be in a little bit of trouble. Lane but Prez is here, so nothing else to, to worry about. This is duo lane now. Can't you see? <laughs> Kana, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, Kana heads over to left to deal with the Loki. You know, like when you're you're playing like uh, if like way 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 back when with like really low level games and nobody knows where to go, and yep. so like you you just like solo was left, whichever side it was on, solo was left, yep. and it's like oh well that's not not the case every time, man. I'm sorry to tell you. I can tell you my my I, I remember my, one of my first rank games. We had duo lane in solo, and they just said we're doing double solo, and they just said what they were doing, and they had to do it. We won, but it wasn't pretty. You were playing the old two one two, and you were like, guys, this isn't season zero. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't know what we're doing. I don't think we had a jungle either. It was just it was just one of those games, and that's kind of the, the play style we're seeing here. And then oh, what another a pull. pull, and then a knock up. I mean, clean. It's the same recipe. Every single time. Pull, knock up, fear no evil, kill on the Rotwin. 0-3-1 for the support. That's another one picked up here for the Scorpions. Might be a little bit more. Davy gets low, though. Nil goes in, looks for the execute. Going to get body blocked now. Might be in the wrong spot, wow. though. Taken down. Davy's on a killing spree. At some point in this game, Pred slipped a, a magnet in Rotwin's pocket and has been able to find him with every single pull. And I always just look towards the face cam because when you get grabbed by a free pull, you kind of just go... You know, it's just, it's, just, <laughs> it's just an exhale immediately into Fear No Evil every single time. The CC oh. chain is absurd. It's only Rotwin. He's the only one he can pull, but he gets him every single time. He's got whatever the tree equivalent of a magnet is in his pocket. And these pulls will just not, not connect on him. Unfortunately for Rotwin, it's resulted in some, some unfortunate, unfortunate spills. Luckily there, it's around the Tier 2. He gets a good taunt, has some teammates backing him up, so it's not going to be another death. Scorpions didn't have much to play on, so they're going to back, spend some of this gold. And, Trelly, we're talking power spikes on power spikes. I mean, look at the build difference just in the solo lane right now. Kana is pulled ahead a full Tier 3 and an extra Tier 1 on top of that. So it feels like you're, you're really starting to see a lot of this impact. Similar story down there for the carries, just itemization. Vastly different because of a 7,000 gold lead that the Scorpions have picked up. Yep, and, and Kana is still, in, in my head, just going to be rotating into these fights and doing so much. The Blink is available. Pyromancer has spawned back in. And Warchi is doing really the only thing a Loki can do at the moment is split pushing left, trying to get some farm in the back pocket. As this Pyromancer gets started up and it will be completed, it looks like the Valkyries are not going to try to defend this one. Probably a smart call as there is a five-man grouping over here and you are down in gold and in numbers. But maybe a fight towards the Oni Fear. We've <laughs> seen a bit from the Valkyries. They know how to how to initiate a fight when they have the numbers advantage. I would still like to see an attempt, you know. The, if Rotwin channels the ultimate, you've got that double assassin dive. There still is ways to find picks here. Rolling over and just letting the, the farm be siphoned away. Yeah. Doesn't seem like the best idea, but, uh, you know, just trying to find ways to get back into the game here are the Valks so far. And once again, Oni Fear gets started up. Gonna be walked around for a bit, but where's the rest of the Scorpions? They're not here just yet. Looking at Sarpei, maybe turning what could be a disastrous fight into a wondrous fight. Uh, but that's assuming there's a fight at all. And <laughs> Vorchi, Rotwin. They just say no and walk away. Three levels down for the support. Just now ticked to level 12 for Rotwin. Uh, one level, one and a half, let's call it, for Warchi since he just ticked over to 17. So there's a free Oni Fury picked up by the Scorpions. Jelly, we are now at that 9,000 mark, or at least hovering at that area. And that's no Fire Giant. That's no Tier 2s. That is just pressure on the map, and they're looking for a little bit more. Defender of Olympus being channeled. Rotwin's going to join over here on the right-hand side. Sarpei using, using the Fear No Evil, trying to stay alive. Unfortunately taken down. Now Warchi in trouble. Streak up, turns it around, but the damage is still there. The turnaround is looking good for the Valkyries, trying to chase down this TMI. They get it. They get Preds as well. It is a 2v4. Kana does not seem to want to stop just yet. Davey's got a lot of damage, but you might need a little bit more than just the two of you. And that is going to be the Scorpions starting to call the retreat. One for three. Finally, some fight back from the Valks. Yeah, that was a beautiful engage, and that's what I'm talking about. The Valks always had the ability to do so, and it seems like Davey was not a part of this fight. I mean, he shows up so late. Supernova was even off the mark. Did not hit too much damage there. That is going to be a big win for the Valks, but what do they get in the meantime? Remember, the gold lead is still massive at the moment. You're able to get these these fights that you can fight on your terms. What happens when the Aru Scorpions group is five and don't get called out? I like the idea to invade some farm on the right side of the map, but that's pretty much all they can do. Remember, with this comp, 
you're not just rushing down fire. You're, you're not killing it as quickly as you would if you had a typical ADC. So the, Val the Valks are entirely reliant on winning out a fight so hard that the Scorpions can't walk up and contest the FG after a fight like that. Not quite enough. You're seeing Warchi head back over to duo lane. Rotwin's over there as well, trying to get a bit tankier. So that's going to be a very small win. Not going to tip any objectives in the way. But I'm thinking we're, we're seeing that, those signs of life yeah. that I wanted to see from the Valks. Now, the thing that stands out to me the most, and they're, they're doing it again. Rotwin just now backs to base because his health bar was uh, atrociously low. It was wild that he was still around. But, the, you know, you, you had mentioned Warshi split pushing. Yep. We've seen the speed that Loki can rotate into fights, especially if they're happening around mid. He can get there pretty quickly. Might still be a little bit late. Uh, and the split push, admittedly, hasn't been pushed that much. You, you think about it, he's been getting a lot of farm from the waves with the tower. Over on left is still standing. Not only that, he's been at his tier one line more often than not. But Rotwin utilizing that global presence, right? Hanging out with Warchi, soaking up some farm, trying to play catch up. What was two to three levels is now one level difference between Rotwin and Preds. You're starting to see at least some of the item gap get picked up. He's also gone for the Oni Hunter's Guard super early on, which we've seen a couple times this week, Trelly, but that hasn't been like the go to item for a lot of these supports. Is that just because he's surrounded by so many fights? Is it because of the taunt maybe helping it out? It, it's a desperation call, I'm thinking. You usually want, you know, support items are for the passives more often than not. You you're, you can't you can't be too picky. But once Rotwin realized how much damage was going to be coming his way, and also the fact that he's the primary initiator, we've seen Defender of Olympus off the back of these assassins immediately into a taunt, you're going to be in the fight. I'm thinking he needed to be as tanky as he could as quickly as possible, and Oni Hunter's Garb is a great place to do it. You're going to get tons of mitigations, tons of protection, and <laughs> it, it, it's cheap, right? That, yeah. that, you, you need to get it as soon as possible. He said, hey, I need one item that's going to help me not die, and that's the call. Look how quickly this fire giant's being shredded, though. Will the Valks walk up in time? Yeah, this is a beautiful burn. They've got two runic bombs in Gone. the belt as well, and I don't even think they need any sort of hyper secure for an FG right here. Instead, they're just going to burn it the old-fashioned way. You had mentioned... Maybe being a little slow for the Valkyries if they tried to start it up. They won't even get the thought this time around. Scorpions, five with Fire Giant immediately onto the Tier 2 in mid. And again, watching. Specifically Pred's inventory right now. Those consumables where those Runic Bombs are don't even need it for the Tier 2 when Davy is around. Phoenix is going to be the call. Kana starts taking it up. Pred's uncertain about this one, though. The whole team playing it maybe a little safer. They need minions. Tiamat providing a little bit. They're going to play this patiently. Probably a smart call. With the Wisps down, going to drop the Bracer as well. I'm keeping my eye on Worst Turtle, though. They've got plenty of dive. Usually it's Worst Turtle at the back. Get that ult from Rotwin. And then Warchi dives as well. But all relics are available. And there's those bombs. Kana goes in, Go pushes Nil back. What a big taunt from Rotwin, though. Do they have the follow-up, the damage that's necessary? Fear no evil comes out, tries to save Sarpe, but it is not successful this time around. Warchi is able to find one. Body block on the execute. Stops Nil from getting some big kills, but he still finds Davy. Takes him out, but trades his own life for the prospect. Kana chasing him down. Streak up, murdered in mid lane. And it is a three for one. One more time, the Valkyries. Lose the Phoenix, but find some kills. Yeah, that kind of looks like Khan is going to be out scot free, so not the biggest deal. And the Phoenix did go down. The Falcons are going to help get some farm in the meantime, though. Maybe grab a tier one tower, but Preds is already here trying to defend. And that's good, don't get me wrong, but uh, what are the Falcons going to get off? It looks like grouping up towards the Gold Fury, and that's great. Want to get some more damage online. They have shown that, th that they can initiate a fight so well, right? They have plenty of damage. They can get these kills. But the Aru Scorpions are still putting map state in their favor. Someone is going to have to be delegated to clearing fire minions in mid. And I think that Pred's got a massive ultimate off there as well. It's just very difficult to keep your mages alive. And in this case, also Sarpe alive with this double assassin dive. I'm thinking as the game continues, you really don't need to do the traditional brand of smite where you go for fire giant push in go for phoenix go for the end if the if the valks keep winning these fights slowly but surely the, those respawn timers are going to add up and yeah. they can just run it down mid try and find an end call off of a play like that the other scorpions recognize that though and they are going to try and take as many towers as possible grouping up towards the right side of the map still have fire giant on the tanks they're going to play this one slowly we might see a little more now sarpe's monkey toss just off the mark Jelly, I do want to pause at this while we have the, the a moment of reprieve because the Valks look like they will 
try to make a tier 2 defense here. Maybe I'll actually hold that thought as they're going to step forward a little faster. The minion wave gets here. Kana walking forward. Does not find the knockup. Doesn't find a push either. Streak up doesn't land any of the damage. So waiting for the cooldowns to cycle around for the Scorpions. Fire Giant. It's about a minute left, but like you said, it's only on the tanks. Davy's damage is going to be the biggest deal for them. They're trying to walk forward. <laughs> well, trying. Kana's just doing it. Uh, it's the rest of the team that's trying to figure out where they want to be. With no backboard door protections to, to get stripped thanks to, to no minion wave. They're going to have to play this one safe. This is where the Merlin comes in handy. Davy's trying to get some few shots threaded in the needle. They're playing it slow. I'm going to throw this one at you. Double runic bomb. Like one runic bomb, that's a runic bomb. Yeah. When I see two dropped on a uh, on a single objective as it was in that mid Phoenix, that's a tactical nuke. I mean that yep. that is so much damage yep. that your team is dropping in the area. And I think well played by the Scorpions to make that happen. Rotwin's trying to make something happen now. Gets a big taunt, but unfortunately finds himself alone. Killed off, followed up by Wartree. Double kill for Davy. And it's the duo lane for the Valkyrie sitting down. I mean, you could see the fear in the Scorpion's eyes. Every time that taunt was charged up, everyone tried to retreat. But once that taunt actually came through, not enough follow-up. Shriek up was the target, gets very low. The relics are up now, but we're not up when that taunt happens. And it was a beautiful immunity. Warchi tried to, to ult in off that taunt and immediately was immune into the CC chain of just death. That, that Loki cannot survive. And now Fire Giant drops one more time. In this case, a worse turtle and nil were not able to close gap and get to the back line either. Someone had to be defending mid those fire waves, and that's why that engage goes down. And it looks like grouping towards the right side of the map is the call. Warch will be back up in 10. There won't be an excavate available, but looks like slowly but surely the, the scorpions might just back up here. He knows he has mages, right? Like, they can just clear those minions pretty easily. I guess the, the call again, try to get to the tower as fast as possible. Uh, Trelly, mid Phoenix is about to respawn. They're going to get the Pyromancer for a nice little runic bomb. No tactical nukes available to them this time. They're going to need another, what, five minutes before they could try to stack that up. I think that's just such a, a smart play earlier from the Scorpions to, to make what was a very rough Phoenix Siege still go in their favor despite losing three. And unfortunately, that last engage from the Valkyries going flat you know, after seeing them fight back twice in a row, it felt like. Losing another Fire Giant, having it on all five for the Scorpions. Where do you go now? If you're the Valkyries, where are you looking for your defense? Are you even bothering to, to step up to, to the Tier 2 on left, or are you just looking strictly towards your Phoenixes? I mean, I, I think that play works if Worst Turtle and Nil are able to get to the back line again. Because that the Fire Minions were pushing in mid, that full-on engage was not able to fly. They had good... It, it was Taunt in, a, in Assassinate. It was decent, but... It's the, it's the double assassins that are really able to, to burn through these relics in the back line. So I think the Valks can fight under Phoenix, but no. Tier 2, probably not defending. Mid Phoenix with that Runic Bomb is going to be an afterthought. I'm thinking left and right Phoenix is where the Valks should try and put up a full defense. And if the Aru Scorpions actually push for this left side burn, then yeah, they can fight here. They can try. We've mentioned it a few times, but consistently for the last 15 minutes playing into what feels like a, a 9k, 10k gold lead. Definitely made things harder for the Valkyries. Finally starting to get towards the end of some of their itemizations, but that's taken a while just to get to this point. And there's still 10,000 gold hovering on side of the Scorpions. Mid Phoenix responds, kind of blinks forward, taunted in now. Might actually get burned down. No, too many mitigations. The Hercules. Well, he walks out a little low, but he is not too worried about the damage he takes. Yeah, so far it's been let kind of use that regrowth passive, run in, try and find a pull back up. Repeat. The taunt came through, but there was no more damage followed up. Rawin didn't pop the Ankh or anything. There was no ultimate from Worst Turtle. Now, slowly again, the bomb gets dropped, and this time the ult comes through on Akana. Yeah, Akana pulled in. Half health for him. Backs away, wisps, and just good old Hercules number is going to help him out. His teleport's available as well. Ward coverage, even if you didn't have it, there's a million wards, it feels like, in the inventory, or at least there were, now finally dropped on the side of the Scorpions. So Kana going to be able to teleport right back in and be even more powerful. The question is how fast he jumps back in. And who are we kidding? It's Kana. He's going in immediately. Comes in with more health than he had. Uh, now just tanking up the Phoenix He's like just nothing. There's it. the Excavate. Not dealing a lot of damage, but not taking a lot. Davey doing work while Kana's separating, though. Gets the left side Phoenix. Yeah, that shield of teleport. I mean, you, you get the extra buff the second you come in. He pops that heal. 
Just W key. He, he did not stop for a second. There was no thought other than go. His team left. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's just you get so much the movement speed, 40 prods, 10 seconds he had, and he said, "I'm getting this Phoenix. Whether you guys come in with me or not, I do not care." And unfortunately, the Valks already used most of their their prod shred on him the first time they went for that engage. So left bird goes down. The bright side, mid Phoenix has respawned at this point. It's it's getting it's been healed up since the entirety of that siege. But now the Valks are pushing down the right side of the map. They want to get set up at that fire giant. It's going to spawn in here soon. I don't imagine they're going to burn it, though. They want to play. They want to try and poke out or maybe get a kill. First person who walks up. At the moment, it's Preds, but it looks like playing this smart are the Scorpions. They're grouped up for now. A little bit of an ambush. I think they spotted that out. Yeah, Preds sees him. And Preds? No, he, he does it. A little? No, maybe he doesn't know. warchi has been spotted. Sarpe has to see this now. Rotwin misses the taunt. No, it's going to fall apart. Preds with a knockup. Walks back to the team, but the fight is on. Fear no evil. Turns down Ray Shadow. Preds walks out of this. Sarpe's low. We're sort of looking for the hero plays. Finds a kill, but the execute is there on the other side. Can they chase down a little bit more? Excavate. Trying to find big damage. Does so on the Preds, but it's split. Everybody has separated. Warchi looking for maybe the cleanup kills on the back. Preds is low nil. Just needs a couple of hits, but you got two people chasing you. Finally, Davey goes down, but Warchi loses his life to get the kill. Rotwin's out of here. And unfortunately for nil, has no backup here. Two alive on the Scorpions. Give it a little bit of time. It'll be two alive left for the Valkyries. A huge stagger <laughs> kill, though. Actually benefiting the Scorpions. I mean, think about this. This is going to be another, yeah, full minute now before you have nil back. Well played by the Scorpions just to stagger things out. Yeah, and that could have went a lot worse. I, I mean, Rotwin misses the initial taunt on a Sarpe. If it does come through, maybe you're forcing that fight a bit harder. Unfortunately, Worst Turtle had to back in the middle. I mean, that fight goes a lot better, and I think... Nil might even survive if War Turtle doesn't have to go back, but someone had to defend the base. The fire minions were pouring in on that left side of the map. This is what I'm talking about, though. If the Valks were able to find these sort of team fights earlier on before that gold lead just ballooned out of control, we may be looking at a different endgame here. Unfortunately, it takes a bit for these assassins to hit this point where Warchi can actually be a threat. He wasn't a threat in lane in the jungle. It's much different. Worst Turtle is consistently getting to the back line and finding these confirms towards some of these kills. But now, someone's got to deal with left. It looks like that's going to be the nemesis. So the Ardu Scorpions could step up. This is EFG now, 33 minutes in. They're looking at Pyromancer first, but it looks like the Valks are actually going to rotate out. This is going to be a slow play here. If the Ardu Scorpions are smart, which they are, they're going to wait this out until someone heads over to left. This is the play you had kind of mentioned earlier on and the scenarios you had mentioned earlier on the Valkyries just waiting until late game if they get a pick and you had you had said this honestly maybe 20 minutes ago where it's just the, the timers will play so heavily in their favor and so that's what they're looking for even though there's five towers still standing on the side of the Scorpions Still feels like it could be anyone's game. Rotwin, though, pushed forward. There's going to be the Fear No Evil trying to peel its four-man pull, but it's not enough. Rotwin gets burned down. Now it's a separated fight. Warchi, nothing you can do about this when the Scorpions take out two. And they're looking for a little bit more knockback wow. pull in onto nil. Knock up from the TMI. They execute the ultimate use for the disengage, but you're not going to get far enough. Sarpe finds a double with fire minions in the Titan room. They have the choice. Fire Giant or Rush, they're going to choose FG. And make no mistake, that all is from Kana. I mean, a beautiful pull in onto Rotwin. Warchi ults in because he thinks he has to save his support. He dies as well. And then another pull in onto Nil. Yeah, they're all dead. Every, everyone that Kana was able to pull ends up defining a death. And again, that Loki is forced in because of that pull. This Hercules pick, man, it has been, it has been great and it's had some ups and downs, but it just seems like Kana is unkillable at times. You can see there, not a lot of movement, not a lot of conversation happening for the Valkyries. Instead, it's going to be the rush forward. Kana leading the way one more time. Titan getting just burned like it's nothing. And that is going to be a clean pickup for the Scorpions. That last fight, Trelly, a very easy path forward for them to find a win. Yeah, and I even like the draft a bit. It seemed like... They were really trying to focus in on Kana. You know, you get this nemesis, you get this Achilles, try and shred his prots and execute him. We saw an attempted gank early on, but there was no answers. Yeah. But that was the answer, and it was not able to actually find any kills. It just seemed like this Hercules was too much to deal with, was setting up too hard. And also, 
We gotta give shouts out to those poles, man. Preds was on point. The Sylvanas did not let Rotwin breathe the entirety of the early game. Yeah, I think a lot of this game, you know, it's easy to get lost in the last 15 minutes, at least for me. A lot of fight back from the Valkyries that happened in there, right? A lot of three for ones where it finally feels like they're getting something done. Yep. And it's easy to forget that the first 20 minutes of the game, the Scorpions piled on a 10k gold lead with two kills total like they did not find too much I even not a lot of objectives at first to get to 5,000 uh, the farm game the early game whatever the scorpions were doing there really set them up I mean to the point where we had Kana you had mentioned him as a, as a big player a full tier three up on nil and it's just because of that farm game so whatever they did they want to recapture the Valkyries maybe going back to their notes trying to figure out how to scrap some of that early game uh, and change it up for themselves. They're down 1-0, maybe getting knocked out, maybe fighting back. We'll find out right after this.
was a bit of a slow start here in game number one between the Aru Scorpions and the Valhalla Valkyries. It's nearly 11 minutes before we even got to really see our first fight break out and first blood kind of strike. But by that point, the Aru Scorpions already established themselves a pretty nice lead going up against the Valkyries. And by the time we start getting to some of these objective plays, some of these actual battles around the structures, for moments it looked like the Valkyries were too far behind, but at least some fight back from the Valks. Good team fighting from them was strong, but unfortunately just not enough because of the deficit that the Aru Scorpions had already put them at that point, Myth. Yeah, for the Valkyries, I think some standouts. Worst Turtle and Nil, even playing into that deficit, look very good. Nil constantly making his way into that back line, being very disruptive on the Achilles. Worst Turtle as well, just really finding those priority targets. But at the end of the day, a 10,000 gold lead is incredibly difficult to fight into. Uh, the Valkyries, of course, bring it back down to 7K, but it hovers there for a good long while until eventually the Aru Scorpions seem to tighten things up, group up as five, utilize their superior team fight composition, and finally are able to close this one out. Uh, I think major keys for the R Scorpions here really was Sarpe uh, on this Hunbots. A lot of those Jirno evils just felt like they were doing too much, just separating the back line. Worst Turtle would try and initiate with that ultimate. So often it was Kana in first, immediately that Nemesis ultimate shreds the defense, and Sarpe said, well, it's very clear that it's time for the Valkyries to fight. I'll go ahead and drop my massive AoE fear and prevent anything from going down immediately afterward. It's one of the weaknesses of this Valhalla Valkyries draft, this a double assassin composition. Sure, very good at finding picks, really good at maneuvering the map, has high kill potential in the early, but not having any form of like range, consistent damage, barring the mid laner Merlin, which of course put out plenty of damage in that match, makes it so, so difficult, not only on siege, but on siege defense. Gotta feel bad for Rotwin too. I mean, the first two or three deaths that that man had was off the exact same combo multiple times. It was Preds pulling him in, Rooting him, Sarpe dropping Fear No Evil, and Davey using that Supernova immediately on top. Just the hard CC and damage chain from that squad made it so difficult for Rotwin's early game. The fact he was even able to have some kind of bounce back towards the mid and late stage game was maybe the most impressive part for him on his team over there. But unfortunately for the Valks, they do fall in game number one. The good news, it's a best of three. You don't go out after just a single game, so there's some opportunity now for the Valkyries to fight back. We'll see what they do differently in the picks and bands for game number two and see if they're gonna continue sticking to their guns, keep going with this double assassin style of play, but maybe some adjustments, maybe throughout the remainder of the, the team outside of there. You go for these double assassins, can't make any complaints about the Merlin in the mid lane, maybe you swap it to try and get the team out for yourself or you, you ban the team on the other side. Not sure exactly maybe what the call is for the Valkyries in that regard, but as far as the Scorpions, they're gonna stick to their guns in this one. They're gonna go with at least the Set and the Maui ban on their side. Opposite end, it will be a Tiamat and a Yamoja ban for the Valkyries. Yeah, I'm not so certain the Valkyries need to change the, the fundamental identity of their draft. They can rock the double assassin as much as they want. I think it's the the time scale of their assassin selections. Both Nemesis and Loki require a little bit of itemization, can't exactly hang in the early game. That's why we saw, even in spite of that low kill first 10 minutes, it was a massive gold lead for the Aru Scorpions. They could just throw their weight around at the neutral farm, control both clear buffs, mid camps going their way as well. If it's a set, which is banned out, the Aru Scorpions taking good note uh, of one of Warchi's best performing picks, then you're not really concerned about the early game. You can control the neutral farm, you've got massive poke potential, and you can clear waves at the skewer. Loki doesn't exactly bring the exact same thing. So if you want to put Warchi on a late game slanted assassin, I'd like to see Worst Turtle on the early, or, or vice versa, put, put Worst Turtle on the early. Uh, and Warchi on the lead. That said, first assassin locked in isn't for the Valkyries. Instead, it's the Aru Scorpions, and it's one of Sarpe's favorites. This Thor with the global presence, the massive damage output, how he leverages Bluestone out of the jungle, getting additional damage from that wall now, a change that we saw towards the tail end of Season 9. Just gives you one more way to proc that passive, and another way to proc Bluestone is essentially just another win condition. So it's Merlin and Freya. As the final two bands before this Thor gets locked in. Let's well, see something a little bit different sparking up in the mid lane now between these mages. The uh, the massive mage god pool that, that War Sword was alluding to in his pregame interview has now been banned away, both the Merlin and the Tiamat. We have seen a little bit of Agni this weekend. We've seen some Baba Yaga pop in every so often as well. So I wonder where the next couple of picks will lie for the mid lane mages. Do you have still some magical hunters left open? Soul, Ola Run, and even notably Kronos, who has been pretty much largely absent the entirety of this weekend, though. Really feels like Kronos has kind of pulled himself 
away from the, the mage ADC style of play, and it's just almost kind of re-identified himself as a full-on burst mage. Yeah, Kronos just does not feel great in an assassin meta. If, you, if you're relying on actually channeling rewind, good luck with all that flat pen. The assassins get throughout the early game. So instead of the standards, it's the Discordia locked in. Another pick that we've seen here or there throughout this event. Has great CC lockdown, phenomenal AoE damage with the Golden Apple, but it's mainly that passive, the Strife, just so strong for Discordia. Will likely find its way to the soul laner, regardless of who the soul lane is. Those guys love to have scraps in their lane, so additional power for the Valkyries on that side of the map. But with both teams emphasizing dual lane play, it might just equalize the Discordia passive. We might go without seeing it really find impact for the first 10, 15 minutes of the game. Thor, Soul, and Sylvanas round out the top three now for the Aru Scorpions. So, exact same dual lane for the Scorpions that we saw from game one, now shifting into game number two, Athena. Still the call for the Valkyries, and one that got banned away in the second wave of bans was the Guan Yu. This will be one of the first times in a few sets that we've actually seen Nil have to stray away from the Sylvanas, or not the Sylvanas, the Achilles that he was going, going towards, but it's actually of his own accord going away from this one, so maybe see something a little bit more valuable with this Guan Yu for the comp. Some healing, some defense shreds, some more consistent initiation, the cavalry charge just running down that back line. Very difficult for Soul to escape from Guan Yu. If you get all the way into the fully channeled to separate, you feel pretty alright about it, but Guan Yu can lock you down before you create a whole lot of distance. And even if you do get into the essentially Aegis state, should allow the rest of the Valkyries to catch up to you pretty quickly. You are lacking a bit in damage as of now for the Valkyries. Discordia sure brings it on her own, but Guan Yu not exactly known for his damage until around level 20. We've been seeing that Sundering Axe build really help him out. Uh, Athena as well. Maybe not as high damage output as a Sylvanas on the other side. And with the sustain that the Aru Scorpions have already locked in, it's going to be very difficult to poke through in these elongated battles around Gold Fury, around Fire Giant. Soul with the self-sustain and Sylvanas with the team wide. Instead... So standard mage ban from the Valkyries. I thought it would have been Agni. I thought it would have been Baba Yaga. Maybe even Thoth we've seen a fair bit. But it's the Yu Huang taken off the table. It's one of the safest mages in the game. Makes me think the Valks might try an all-in on a W key style comp. Notably, Warchi's Najja still available if they want to go for a pick. Susano still up as well. If the Valks want to go with that, maybe for Worst Turtle. It was a Loki and a Kamazots banned away from the Scorpion. So Najja selected. Leads me to believe this one will be going over to Warchi over in the duo lane in that carry position. And the Valkyries band away, as you mentioned, the Yu Huang, but also the Hades. So worried about maybe some extra magical damage coming from that soul lane. We've seen a little bit of Hades this weekend so far. Has been still playing that full burst mage style of solo play compared to the very tanky style that we've been seeing kind of across the board from the Warriors and the other Guardians. And now the Baba Yaga being hovered by the Scorpions, and that we thought maybe would have been a BAM, but instead may just be the selection for the mid lane of the Scorpions. If Baba Yaga gets locked in here, you really like how the Aru Scorpions are capable of baiting in these team fights. It's the kind of reel them in, throw damage as you're holding down the S key, just retreat while simultaneously throwing it out. Soul and Baba Yaga, two of the best mages at playing that style of play. Maybe a counter selection into the Guan Yu as well, having that CC immunity from the home sweet home. The knockaway for Najah's Sash. If you go to the home sweet home, you get that HP shield as well as the knockup. Makes it pretty difficult for Najah to stick around in these fights. So often we'll see Najah go for the Sash, wait it out, say, all right, well, maybe they'll use their beads on, on uh, out of fear instead of out of reaction to the Windfire wheels. Baba Yaga, not exactly really fearful of the Najah combo. And then Ardio as well. That is a lot of sustain now on the side of the Aru Scorpion if they elect to go down that path. It's even more. <laughs> even more with the Hell and the Cleanse to prevent this high CC composition from the Valkyries. Confound, the Strife, the, the Stun from Guan Yu, the Stun from Naja, all countered out and all telegraphed CC. Hell's Cleanse, if she's on top of the ball, could really throw a wrench in the works of the Valks here. But that also brings it now to a four magical composition for the Aru Scorpions, leaving Sarpe as the lone physical damage dealer. We've seen what Sarpe can do on this Thor, so I'm not going to doubt the Aru Scorpions if this is the route that they decide to go down. But now for the Valkyries, Death final selection going to be the Thanatos now coming out for the jungler Worst Turtle on the side of the Valhalla Valkyries. We talk about a lot of the sustain that's on the side of the Scorpions. You have a little bit for team sustain on the Valkyries with the Guan Yu, but a lot of now self-sustain with the Thanatos and the Najah. 
How do you feel about as we start pushing towards the, the 25, 30 minutes, that's really when the big team fights are starting to break out for these two teams. How do you kind of feel about the team fight stage for the Valkyries at that point? I mean, they've got diversified damage output, which does instill a bit of confidence in me. It still is a very high execution composition, though. It, very difficult to actually lock down the Aru Scorpions. It would be difficult for Hovering Death to actually find and execute at that with all the sustain uh, on the Scorpion side. But as far as ease of play, I think I, I, I do prefer the initiation from the Valkyries, but the follow-up may be a bit lacking. This is one where I think you want to win out early if, if you're on the side of the Valkyries. Play through the Thanatos and the Najat throughout the early, leave Guan Yu on an island and utilize that global presence from the Athena. Whereas the Aru Scorpions, it's a very high scaling composition, but having essentially quadruple dipped into the sustain pool, you got to think there's going to be one or two onks on the other side that really shake up the team fight. You're putting a whole lot of onus on Sarpe out of the jungle as well. The sole physical damage dealer on one of his signature picks, I think capable of performing, but certainly no easy task. And, and even Thor being that backline dive initiator, who's following up with them? Ardio can get up there pretty easily, but we've seen Sylvanas stray away from the blink, so he'll have a hard time following up with his own ultimate. Soul and Hell have to contend with the dive of the Valkyries on the other side. It's hard to say. Both teams bring very unorthodox compositions here. Uh, I, I think a lot rides on the early game for both sides. Yeah, there's going to be maybe a lot of emphasis on anti-heal for the Valhalla Valkyries. And a couple different ways to apply it there as well. Having an actual traditional mage in the mid lane means that Divine Ruin probably going to be second item, if not maybe even potentially as a first one. Though we have been seeing a lot of emphasis on getting that Book of Toth online for a lot of these mages. Brawler Speed Stick on the mind for either of these assassins. You gotta imagine not just maybe an Ankh, but potentially even a Pestilence as well. Get some of that aura anti-heal for the Valkyries to try and deal with this. Because anytime I see just a single Hell, I'm thinking probably three, four anti-heal items to deal with that. But now you've got Hell, Sylvanas, yep. Ardeo, Soul. Who knows what else might pop in there. Maybe even some meditations through. So for the Valkyries, is it really pivotal for them to have to be able to get those early kills out for their team? I think so, especially for scaling into the mid game. That's that's really where I'm keeping my eyes. If the Valkyries can win out early, get some gold furies rolling, you're not so concerned about their inability to siege come late, and then you just get that Ankh available a little bit sooner, which uh, generally being level 12, second relic, you, you want to get there as quickly as possible. But it's not just the Valks. The Scorpions also have to worry about healing. Well, we'll see if the Valkyries can bring this one back and take us to a game number three, or is this the end of the road for them against the Aru Scorpions? Let's jump into game two with Gore and Shrelly. It's been a hard-fought path for both of these teams. The Scorpions knocked down here yesterday, but up 1-0 versus the Valks. The Valks on the other side. Shrelly knocked down day one and clawing their way through opponents to get here. They do not want to get knocked out, and I'm going to touch on something Miff had said towards the very end. Uh, healing goes both ways here. Granted, Soul, Self Heal, Sylvanas, Team Heal, Hell, Team Heal, RDO, Team Heal, maybe a little bit outweighing the uh, Guan Yu on the other side. But there is still healing on both squads. And with that double assassin, double dive, something that both teams are going to have to be worried about. Yeah, for a couple things to note, first and foremost, five horn shards for the Valkyries. They want cooldown resets and they want them. As early as possible, I suppose. I, I want to tell you, there's a really... Remind me after this game, because there's a very funny joke I want to say, but I'm 90% <laughs> certain I would get talked to after the <laughs> podcast. So we'll save that one. I'm sorry, chat. You're not going to get to be a part of that one. Unlucky. But also... If Hazer were here, he'd make it. Of course. <laughs> well, something uh, I think, as you said, they're, uh, they're going to be able to bring here for the Valkyries. I'm excited to see what it has to offer, but, but, but why forego it? Because you see on the other side, this is actually similar to what they did. Preds and Davey going for attack speed early on, get yep. some of that clear. Uh, what is all this cooldown reduction going to do for the Valkyries? Well, That's going to be good. There, <laughs> there is a strategy to employ here where Rotwin goes back, gets upgraded, upgraded meditation, and then everyone pops their shard with the Cloak of the Ascetic, and you just get cooldown resets at the wazoo. You know, you just take a fight and they're like, okay, the, the taunt is down. The, the death scythe is down. You know, we can go in, and then they're just back up. However, it does just seem like they're trying to snowball early, and they, yeah. th this could be a nice way to do it, take you off guard with your cooldowns. A, lo a lot of people might be questioning the four magical composition, because in times we've seen plenty of four physical compositions with one mage. But in a meta like this, 
where you, you can get true damage online on your mages, and physical defense items are all the hotness right now, you know? If you're forcing a Guan Yu to build so many magical defense items, it makes getting Breastplate of Regrowth a little less likely. It makes getting, you know, all of these fun physical defense a little less likely. Worst Turtle looking for Kana, will find the Death Scythe. Not quite enough damage to finish that kill though, but gets this RDO very low in the process. And I think it goes to showcase very much what you were saying there, right? I mean, you, you immediately pop your shard, you're doing your best to try and get as much damage out in as little time as possible. Uh, get your team ahead, try to ride this early wave. The one thing, and you know, this is actually going to be a, a huge bonus, I think, for, for anybody involved. I see Thor, and of course, you have to think about yesterday, right? The, the play, the top play, maybe of the tournament, uh, that <laughs> will probably go uncontested, Sam on, on the Thor. I think Betty Smite, uh, you had said, just put out a video about it. So if you're looking for something between games, between sets to watch, I recommend opening a tab and maybe checking that out. But one, for Sarpei, that's a rough performance to try and follow up. But two, Thor's been doing really well. Oh Sarpei yeah. has a fantastic Thor. And though it's been a little more slow to start, let's call it, I still expect some big things out of the other half of this jungle conversation. Yeah, no doubt. I think both junglers have the option to make some dynamic plays. But if game number one is any indication of who's going to be the playmaker in this set, I just want to watch Preds. <laughs> I just want to watch these polls consistently throughout this entire game. Where Where is Sylvanas? When is his three key up? And if so, that's what I want to be watching. But in this Ooh. case, Worst Turtle finds a big rotation early on. Big slows from the ring toss as well. You need a few more autos, but the immunity is there just a little early from Worst Turtle, but it does not matter. First blood this time going to the Valkyries might be answered back or Compounded upon Nils low. Kana chasing him down. Make sure it goes one for one sides of the map. Yeah, that's a great initiation on the left side, though. I mean, y you know that Worst Turtle's looking for action. He went over to right lane, couldn't quite find it, goes over to left lane, immediately tries to continue that aggression. Even attempts to go for a speed buff invade, but Davey makes sure that one doesn't slide. A, a good initiation, though, from Rotwin. Warshi was there with a follow up, of course. And all the horn shards are down. This is this is part of that reason, right? You want to be able to cycle those cooldowns as quickly as possible. You want to get aggressive in the early game. Yeah. And the Valhalla Valkyries have done that. And this was my main complaint last game, right? The fact that they had this comp that would be really good at diving. They, they were able to find picks. They were able to find kills. But they sat. They just sat by idly early game and, and dug themselves into an 8K gold deficit to the point where even when they were winning fights, they couldn't get enough off of it. They're starting. They're coming out the gate swinging this time around. Yeah, I think this is one that immediately, like, so just to see the invade attempts, right, at least on the speed, invade, I think, successful in the purple, showcases where this team is at. Warchi as well, switching from the low key to something that maybe gets a little more hands-on. Game number one this tournament that Warchi played the Naja, I'm just going to say it, it wasn't it. It, no. was, it was not very good looking, did not have or instill a lot of confidence for me. Game number two on the Naja that Warchi played this tournament, absolutely sold me on it. And not necessarily on the Naja itself, but as the team play it can bring, which maybe we're going to have to see a little bit later. Right now, it's a conversation in solo lane. Kana's getting low. There's Defender of Olympus. Whoa. The execute misses, though. <laughs> Does not mean the kill is gone. Just means the Worst Turtle doesn't have an ult for a little while. I mean, he, he was taunted. How, how we miss him, those. But I think great play by Rotwin to actually join that fight. A on paper, <laughs> look like a pretty easy gank, right? You've got Worst Turtle. There's, a, there's an RDO that doesn't move too much, should be able to find that kill, but Sarpe was in the sky, so if Rotwin doesn't join, could have been trouble. Shouldn't have the damage to finish that one unless Rotwin is able to find a taunt, but now Sarpe is behind Rotwin, so I'm not sure that one's going to fly. Good damage throughout, though. We've been talking about the healing. Shouldn't matter too much as long as Streak Up's able to find some teammates to heal off of, and Sarpe will fill that role nicely. And more importantly, you hold on to the beat, so don't have to worry about any more aggression for now. And good ultimate there from Ray Shadow just to find some, some damage onto this mid laner. Not going to net anything, though. The Valks are up 2-1. Gold still in favor of the Scorpions. Yeah, ever so slightly. You know, actually, earlier we were talking about the speed buff invade attempt from Worst Turtle. While that attempt was going on, Sarpe did just go into the Valkyrie's jungle, take away the speed buff, see maybe what they can do here. Warji steals this purple. Uses the Windfire Wheels, but is going to be out of there cleanly. He's waiting to see. Sarpe, no ult available. Just a few more seconds on that one, but with no beads, didn't feel confident. We're back in solo. We're back with Worst Turtle, and we're back to see what he can do. Silence is there. The Cripple Field working out pretty well right now for Kana. 
Wow. The damage is still going to be the follow-up. Good body blocks by Nil. Have to give him credit. That's a second kill for the solo laner here. A nice level lead over the RDO for the Guan Yu. I really thought Shriek Up might be able to, to join that fight and heal up, but there's a lot of damage, and that Pro Tread does come through from Nil, making sure you're essentially doing true damage this early on with a build like Kana's. So uh, I'm thinking Kana's going to need to ward up and probably pay a little bit more attention to where this, this Thantos is on the map. Dashed away the second there was any aggression, but there's a lot of damage to be had here. Nil is having a fantastic Ooh. start. There's the pole. Get the beads down from Orchi. Not quite enough damage to finish any kills, but those beads down is going to be a big win. Maybe Sarp can head over to left lane and maybe look to go for an Anvil of Dawn play. Tower could be looking a little bit worse for wear as well. At least pushing one wave under, and that shield buff might be nice. But it looks like a rotation over to gold. The Aru Scorpions may be trying to sneak this one. They're starting it. And Pratt, <laughs> I always love this, the little ring around the rosy uh, that the Gold Fury gets with the supports. Is going to hit him, though, eventually. The damage is there. Up into the sky goes the Thor. That's going to be looking for a little bit more worse turtle. Rotwin, they're going to go in. Valkyrie's looking for something. Not able to steal this one away. Rotwin, in fact, walled away. The Scorpion's call seems to be to back off, get the Gold Fury, get out. And they're running as fast as they can. Sash just Ooh. a little short from Warchi. Good route from Preds. Yep. And that should be all it wrote. Valkyrie's... Do their best to turn it around, but it is a nice objective play. Still only just actually just shy of a thousand gold in favor of the Scorpions. That was a good double route. I mean, I, I'm thinking that the chase down maybe is able to get forced on that left left side of the map if that route doesn't come through. So Preds still on point with the Sylvanas. Davy is going to be forced to beads there. And honestly, I think that was an overcommitment. You go immune in the air, there's no way you're dying if you press three before Najah ults you. And it's actually really unfortunate, but it looks like a possible gank on the right side of the map. Preds is here as well, and here comes Rotwin. Nil going for the ult, finds the dunk. There is the double stun, but Sarpe is just low, not dead just yet. Worst Turtle will get it. The healing and the damage from the tower, it's all going to add up. Worst Turtle too low and taken out by the Sylvanas. Rotations started to come through. Streak up is here to help the team out. Kana. We'll make sure that one turns around. It's a one for two. I mean, this is a crazy set of rotations. You see Worst Turtle shows up, Sarpei behind them, then here's Preds, and oh yeah, Rotwin can join from anywhere on the map with Defender of Olympus. Uh, I'm not sure who's getting outplayed in this sense. Of course, that one is still in favor of the Aru Scorpions gold-wise because of everything that's been happening throughout the entirety of the map. And also some great CC on the Worst Turtle. I mean, he dives that tower, and Preds hits the ult, knocks him up, pulls him back under, roots him under tower, makes sure to just line up with all that damage. 2-1 Thantos, though, still has been making his mark throughout the entirety of this map. It's been a part of every single kill. Two kills, two assists. And it doesn't seem like Worst Total wants to stop. And I, I love this adaptation. Again, sitting by idly while your team gets down 7k gold is not something he wants to see again. Hands on. Unfortunately, the... the while the other team gets 7k gold. It's not at that point, anywhere near that point yet, but it's been, been hovering somewhat near that 2,000 mark for the Scorpions, especially after that last play, two for one in their favor, shutting down Nil specifically, finally getting something there, getting a kill onto Worst Turtle and invading some of the jungle. We'll see what Worst Turtle wants to do to answer back. Might be a little bit of a jungle fight. Sarpe caught out. Wall for silence. I think Wall wins this time around. The stun a little too strong. Worst Turtle's going to go ahead and back off. This is where things get a little more complex to, to me, Trelly, because and you're seeing a lot of good rotations, I think, from Warchi, but very similar to the conversation we were having last game, you are not getting the performance from Warchi that Davey is going to be putting out. And not necessarily that it's a bad thing. It's just very different styles of what they're going to be bringing to the table. Has his beads back. Preds might be looking to try and pull those here. They're going to get aggressive in mid, or sorry, in left. It's going to force the wind fire wheels. Beads not used just yet. Here comes Rotwin trying to turn things around. Maybe just to play savior. And all that aggression disappears. Yeah, and I've been, I've been keeping my eye on Rotwin just because, you know, we see the, the five horn shards. We see that meditation has been upgraded. And actually, uh -oh. a blink on a streak up wants to find damage. But I, I'm not sure if Warstar took a look at streak up's build. That's a breastplate of regrowth with the Book of Foth. You got plenty of tank stats, and you're very quick on this hell. You already get movement speed with that, but now looks like another scrap on the left side of the map. Worst Turtle's nearby. Yeah. 
does not have Blink anymore. He's going to need to hit this Scythe if they want to kill, but Beautiful Taunt should set it up. That's going to be enough wow, for the them. Davey walks out thanks to Preds. What a beautiful play by the support. Stops the Valkyries from getting aggressive. It's the knock-up that keeps it going. Davey, <laughs> Davey almost throws it yep. away by turning around the corner. Uh, spots of Thanatos. Turns right back onto the tier one. But what a play by the duo lane to stay alive. Yeah, and, and it was a good play by Rotwin as well. I mean, the taunt right in time for Worst Turtle to walk up and get the easiest scythe of his life. But Preds on point with the peel. Make sure his teammate is going to stay alive here. Worst Turtle still Sarpe. hovering, but here comes Sarpe. Anvil of Dawn available. Are you looking for a target or are you looking to farm? Turns out farm is the call. I'm not going to help this one. So full on retreat. I'm just taking a look at Relics now. Remember, Shriek up lost the beads a bit ago. 80 seconds down. Maybe Warchi able to find an ult if they ever meet. At the, at the moment, it's just been sitting over in duo yep. lane. And in this case, Shriek up has been power farming. I mean, a very quick hell. Sitting in mid lane, using that heal to run around. Speaking of run around, ring around the Rosie part two. Oni Fury is being pulled on a ward this time. So the Valkyries know exactly what health it's at. When I see that, I can't remember the name of the song. It's a uh, not Beastie Boys, Beach Boys <laughs> song. <laughs> very different styles of music, very different genres of music. Uh, just getting around. And unfortunately for Preds this time around, it doesn't quite work out the way that the first one did. They drop that Oni Fury pretty quickly, knowing that the Valkyries still have plenty of opportunity to fight back in. That lead, uh, you know, even though it did start to, to approach 2000 earlier, has not really... Uh, eclipsed that mark just yet. Still hovering around 1,500. Experience is way closer as well. That is another huge deal. Last game, uh, at this point, we were talking about two level deficits and like three rolls. Very comforting, I think, for the Valkyries to not be that far down. Backs against the wall. This game, incredibly important for their success. If they want to try to make it into the SBL, they have to win here. And they're going to keep that pressure up as much as they can across the map. Nil has been the conversation, or at least the target, uh, occasionally for the Scorpions. Meanwhile, Kana has been the one most put down by the Valkyries, kind of changing up what we saw last game, a little more focus. As you said, just more action from Worst Turtle, and admittedly answered a little bit by Sarpe, but we haven't gotten to see that, that big handful of Dawn just yet. Yeah, I mean, I think no matter what we see, we're going to be a little bit let down because of what Sam did earlier on. You know, nothing's yeah. going to fill those shoes. Oh, you only hit three people? I'm sorry, that's just... Yeah, it's I like, mean, it's not like a triple kill. Unless Sarpe up. hits all five, like, we're not going to be, we, we can't get that <laughs> hype. But Sarpe is, has been known to make those plays, so we, yeah. there, there should be some going. And at the very least, hey, Kana gets to steal Chester away from the Valkyries. That's always nice, getting that extra movement speed over on the right side of the map. Because currently nothing's happening on the left. That Oni Fury is available. The vision is there. But no squad feels comfortable going for the pull. And it looks like Rawan is hiding behind the wall. I was going to say, maybe an engage here with beads up and Aegis and Soul 3 just countering Naja. Doesn't seem like you're going to have a good time. <laughs> Davey, come at me. Like, <laughs> just try. Like, actually try. I want to see you try. I want to see if you can get something done. No, instead, Rawan's going to use that global present. Go over to the solo lane to help out Nil, help out Worst Turtle. Sarpe is here. Sarpe wow. is finding the better end of the trade. Sarpe finally finds what we've been looking for. The Anvil of Don Land saves his solo laner and gets a kill to boot. Immediately, I'm calling Gold Fury. I'm saying, Sarpe, don't waste your time. If I'm Kana, I'm saying I'm dead. Just go to the left side of the map. He actually just diffs Worst Turtle in the middle of three. The mitigations from Rotwin do not matter. And now, Oni Fury is still being pulled. Warchi might want to throw a ring. Doesn't really have the best person. It looks like the Scorpions are going to put some respect in. <laughs> Sarpe never left. Now Nil is going to fall down. This Thor is everywhere. He's exactly where he needs to be, man. And right here, it is getting Kana back into this game. Two-level lead for the RDO after what was not a very comfortable start. I mean, a lot of pressure was put on Kana, especially after last game's performance, and they are not letting it stop. Sarpe helping lift the teammates back up. Can I, can I just say that Davey pre-autoed that pull from Preds? Like, it, it, it takes a lot of confidence. If I see my Sylvanas going for pulls through the wall, I'm not even looking in that direction. I'm like, come on, bro. You're not hitting. But da <laughs> but Davey's been watching this set and is like, oh, you're going for a pull? I'm going to pre-ult it because I know you're going to hit it. This time around wasn't able to, but shows the faith that this AD has, ADC has in their support. Yeah. Just you're, you're, you're getting ready every single time the pull is coming. You're like, okay, wait, I'm going to stop what I'm doing just in case someone shows up because this man's been on point. 
Worst Turtle heads over to left, though. Again, with, with both Relics up and Soul staying underneath tower, not much room for a gank opportunity, so it goes back to base. Pyromancer and Oni Fury available, but it looks like the Aru Scorpion is just going to hover in the jungle, see if they can find a pole or maybe a wall from Sarpei to dish out a Relic. You know, we spent a lot of time, or at least the desk kind of hypothesized, and I was wondering, uh, looking at anti-heal. And admittedly, it, it wasn't a huge problem for the first few minutes of the game, so it hasn't been this this crazy, oh my god, I can't believe you haven't gotten it yet. Finally get the Ankh online for, for Rotwin, Pestilence as well, uh, for some magical prots in there, but also just that anti-heal. So going to keep eyes on the Valkyries here and what they're going to be able to provide. Scorpions, get the Pyromancer, Davy. Tries to show up for the Fury. Might actually land in time to still be able to get some damage down. Worst Turtle does kill him off. The Fury gets leashed. This is anybody's game now. Dunk. Sarpei dunks into the back, kills off Rot when they pick up. Ray Shadow the Fury is still low. It's two for one. Davey more than happy to give his life for his team to find this success. They pick up the Oni Fury on the back foot. The Valkyries, they pick that fight. They don't get to win it. I mean, don't get me wrong. Davey did exactly what he needed to. He walked up. He stalled that Fury. He made sure his team's able to grab the pyro, make the rotation over, and Sarpe hits a huge dunk, as you would expect. But if Davey just threes before the Najal, or just beads it entirely, that, that play probably still goes as well, and the Valks get nothing. In this case, they were able to at least get a kill, but it, both Relics were up, Supernova's still available. I'm thinking that, that could have gone even worse because of how well the Scorpions are piloting this map. It's ridiculous that they even went for the Pyro. I thought they were giving up Oni Fury, but just Davy's presence alone was enough to make the Valks feel a little uncomfortable. And the Najawad unfortunately takes a bit to actually bring someone up. They have to come back down, and that was enough time for the Valks to unfortunately just get rotated on by the Scorpions. Rotwin tries to pull the beads, but Davy's sitting under tower. Now they just got to wait because all the objectives are gone. Insane place so far. And the Scorpions, you know, kills 12 of them on the board in 18 minutes. But it has been slow to amass. They find themselves back, the Scorpions, that is, 4,000 gold. Let's call it four and a half a little bit in their favor. Preds looking for a little more. Misses the root. Doesn't have as much follow-up maybe as they wanted. Stream comes over here, though, with this amount of healing. The minions, they might be able to find more. Rotwin goes for the taunt. And it is damage Warchi hour right now. Nice! Windfire Wheels barely avoids the knockup. Otherwise, Warchi is dead. Taunt back in with the rotation. The Valkyries had coming in their favor. Kind of cancel. Halfway through, Worst Turtle Ray Shadow refused to go. Oh. Sarpe became the target. Barely makes it up to the blink. anvil of dawn in the air. Worst Turtle, blink. There's no way you go for it this deep in the base. No, oh, he's, he's still chasing. He goes down. Aegis. He gets the stun. Wall. Aegis is good. The damage is there. Can you get out of the Phoenix last shot? <laughs> oh, it turns Did it you around. See his, did you see his face? He put his hands is in his head. Because I think oh. they both played it perfectly. Sarpe pre aegis is the ult. Make sure to get the wall <laughs> off. Worst Turtle knows it's coming. pre beads is that pre-wall just to get the kill. But unfortunately, the heal was not enough. If Sarpe doesn't have Brawler's beat stick there and the wall didn't apply it, that heal may have been enough to just get out. No one else was going to make that rotation. But I think when you're in elimination game situation, Worst Earl has to go for that play. I, yeah. I'm not letting a, I'm not letting someone in Threshold get away, even underneath their fountain. I'm, t I'm diving the whole way. And there's admittedly worse things than a one-for-one. One. He could have gone for it and just died. Yep. <laughs> so, so realistically, you still get the kill. Uh, you fall back. Respawns now. Might give a little bit of map room over towards the Scorpions. Tier 1 on right, getting pressured out right now. And uh, with... Everyone over here, the minion's still over here as well. Should be a couple autos. Tower goes down. That's all three tier ones gone for the Valkyries. Not a single tower eliminated yet for the Scorpions, which admittedly means that the Scorpions across the two games have only lost like one to two of their <laughs> tier ones. They yep. have been very clean on the map, uh, even in regards to some of the neutral objectives. Pyromancer about to respawn. I have to imagine it's on the mind of the Scorpions. Yeah, no doubt. I've been waiting for a time to bring it up because we saw Streak Up make the rotation over to left and do some damage to Warchi. I say some because when Hell hits you with three abilities yeah. and you're this far ahead, you die. Warchi did not die. So if you take a look at Streak Up's build, Breastplate of Regrowth. We saw that. I like it. So I have ability. Then you get to Lotus Sickle. Okay, missing some damage, but I'm sure it's coming later. Stone of Binding. 
Streak up is the bottom of the damage chart. This man is light stance only. I I'm pretty sure he he's doing a challenge. Maybe he's doing a YouTube speed run, but he's not doing too much damage. He is only peeling for his team. So far, hasn't been a problem. It seems like Kana and Sarpe can take care of the damage for now. But I'm thinking late game, maybe that comes back to haunt them if, if Streak Up's not able to dish out that damage that Hell is usually known for. With this kind of lead, though, it doesn't seem to matter now. Yeah, the healing may be really what's going to matter. Especially when Davey's putting the numbers out that they do. Pyromancer does go the way of the Scorpions, by the way. Runic Bomb picked up for Sarpe. Not much of an answer from the Valkyries. The real question from here is going to be the pressure around the Primal Fury. Looks like could be at least vision game so far in favor of the Valkyries. Nothing crazy starting for it. You know, I want to pick up on, on what you were saying, though. Streak up specifically being able to play, for lack of a better term, really support heavy, right? Yep. Like, just, just facilitator. Because we highlight the healing, but, like, Dark Stance Hell, if you ignore the damage, oh, it slaps. The damage is none. But, like, you've got slows. You've got a lot that really does help your team out. Maybe that'll factor in right here. Worst Turtle just burned down at the beginning of the Fury fight. Nothing you can do about it. Right when channeling the Defender of Olympus wow. doesn't get out of there. Taken down. It's a two for none so far. Apple off the mark. Sarpe goes deep and forces Ray Shadow to feel uncomfortable. Not going to find any more kills, but they get two plus the Primal plus that Pyro. So the Scorpion's feeling more than good about the way the last 10 minutes have gone. I mean, great follow-up there from the team, but Preds is making me think that Sylvanas is, like, the best support in the game right now. These pulls are on point. The the Wrath of Terra for CC to appeal for his team, but also set up for the damage has been absurd. And now Fire Giant's being looked at. Nil, the only one here so far from the Valkyries, but here comes Warchi, and Ray Shadow's not too far behind. Look at Preds. He, he wants to pull. He's not going to be able to find it, but he's still looking for it at all times. Yeah, finally off the mark with one. Fire Giant's getting relatively low. Nil goes in. Scorpions confirm the Fire Giant, and now it is just the aggression. What can you do afterward? A lot of damage being thrown towards Kana, and he doesn't care about any of it. Instead, it's a root on the Rotwin. Burned down. The support's gone. Nil is next on the list. Walg makes sure that retreat is slow. The front line for the Valkyries crumbles under the eyes of the Scorpion. The Stinger stings. And this time around, they're going to feel it eight ways to Sunday. Tier 2 tower in right, burned down. And now it's going to be aggression. Into the Phoenix on the right-hand side. No one here to defend. No minions to help out. Might take a little time to burn. Yeah, this right side bird is going to drop, though. The, defeat, the defense is not happening. And I think smart by the Valkyries. They know, number one, they can't defend it. Number two, their time is better off getting items. They're, they're not going to sit back in well and just sort of look at the Scorpions as they take all their structures. They're going to push left. They're going to take as many buffs as they can and try to get some much-needed power spikes. I mean, they've got three members at level 20. It's just Nil has been the, the target of a lot of aggression here. In this case, uh, Rotwin is a lost cause. That is a level 14 Athena. Not going to be tanky for, I don't know, maybe the rest of the game. <laughs> y your, your job is to use your ult on your teammates and set up, which I think Rotwin has done. The taunts have been there. Unfortunately, this Athena has been the target of, of Pred's aggression for this whole set. I mean, even last game was was one of the first targets pulled in consistently. And now you got two tier twos left. Worst turtle lurking in the jungle. I'm thinking the, the defense has to happen at one of these birds, and mid one wouldn't be terrible. But Nil is still on the right side of the map, and Warchi actually might be getting caught out here. Force into the ult for sure. Yeah, that's going to be an easy win, fire wheels away. And an unfortunate win, fire wheels getting used. I don't think we've gotten to see one used aggressively for a while. Beads stay up. Blink is the other option there for Warchi. No one really have the opportunity for a blink all here. Minions not available just yet, but healing is there in spades. Nice damage from Sarpe. Waiting to see what the engage from the Scorpions is going beautiful to be. Instead, taunt. it's going to be Rotwin who goes in. Beautiful, beautiful taunt. You call it as it is. And yet it doesn't mean anything. Instead, it's Rotwin who goes down 0-4-4. Maybe one of the be more beautiful dons we're going to get to see this entire tournament. Mid Phoenix goes down. The Scorpions back off with their success. Kind of throwing out a little bit of poke on the retreat. Yeah, unfortunate. It was a beautiful taunt, but an even more beautiful cleanse. Streak up pre-cleanse that taunt. Made sure half of his team got out of it. You're not going to be able to cleanse five, but in this case, cleanse three. And then <laughs> Wrath of Terra, Supernova, 
goodbye Rawin. Like I said, this Athena will not be tanky. Warchi oh my is God. not tanky either. He is deleted, and Nil, he's not looking much better. I mean, blink and you miss it. Warchi's gone in what feels like two hits. Nil doesn't last much longer. Tries to survive Rawin. He's back around. Worst turtle up in the sky. Crashes down deep in the base. Not a lot of room to work with here if you are the Valkyries. Your tournament life on the edge of disappearing. Five strong for the Scorpions. They're walking it in. Rotwin, one for the road. No, makes it back to the fountain, but it does not matter. One more win, and the Scorpions continue on their path to the SBL. And I'm thinking, I'm still giving Preds MVP, man. This dude was on point with the Sylvanas play. Not a pick that I expected to be this highly contested in this tournament, but the amount of CC was absurd. Gotta give props to Kana. Yeah. Got very camped at the start of this game but was able to just say, hey, I'm going to stay safe. Sarpe did not let his solo lander live on an island. Nope. When he saw those ganks, he said, don't worry, I'm on the way. <laughs> he ulted in as well. And in this case, the hell actually surprised me. Not looking for damage, goes a supporty style of build, but was just sitting there in light stand saying, go ahead, dash in and yep. taunt. <laughs> uh, I, uh, we do not care about your engage. Seemed like a very smart draft, and they played it so well. Think you're in trouble? Uh, here's a cleanse. Oh, your health is getting a little low here. Let's just get that back up to full. Yeah, I know a lot of moments where even though the anti-heal finally came through for the Valkyries, not enough to be able to silence that, not enough to stop the damage. Sarpe, Davey, but like you said, also the CC, the pulls yep. coming down from Preds. The Scorpions play great from top to bottom, beginning of the set to the end, and they move on, eliminating the Valkyries. But you don't got to hear from me. The desk is going to break this one down. Yeah, the Ari Scorpions in game two with maybe a, a questionable style of sustain comp that we were kind of talking a little bit about going into this game. You know, how well is he going to go in towards the late game? How much anti-heal is going to get built? As I was watching that game, if the, the first anti-heal item that got bought was by the support, a, a second item, Pestilence, followed by an Ankh. And it wasn't until third item that we started seeing the, the Brawler's Beat Sticks, the Divine Runes come in. And it kind of felt by that point it was maybe a little too late to get those items online. Yeah, not even that. The Valkyries kind of lean into their individual god selections of the build more so than counter building. I, I saw a whole lot of sh uh, regrowth, Breastplate of regrowth early on. Felt like they weren't quite able to deal with the magical damage. It's like one Fizz damage dealer on the other side, and he wasn't everywhere. Felt like he was at times, though, considering how active Sarpe was on the map. Uh, I'd called for early aggression from the Valhalla Valkyries if they want to get ahead of this healing composition. They got the kills early on, just could not transition it into a lead. Really liked what I'd seen from Davey. Pressures out the duo lane, immediately rotates in towards the gold period. That keeps them afloat throughout the first 10 or so minutes of the game. And then afterward, the Aru Scorpions, as a five-man stack, just group up and take every single team fight. it felt like. There just was not enough damage on the side of the Valkyries to put anybody in the execute threshold, or if anybody was in execute threshold, they weren't there long enough with all that healing for the Thanatos to find value from the hovering death. The Aru Scorpions, they've diversified their win conditions once more. This Quadra magical composition looks good in their hands, and I really like the, the speed with which they played a, as well. I mean, it was concise wins. Got a couple kills on Gold Free, run down the Fire Giant. Got a couple kills on right, run down the Phoenix. It, it was simple. They came in, they played with confidence, and they went out in two quick ones. Yeah, it also really showed that this is not a game where they were worried about their hell doing damage or not. I mean, nearly yeah, bottom of the build. charts for the team. Only about 1,800 up over their support, but 12,000 healing from Streak Up during that game. Effectively removed all of Warchi's damage that he had done during that game. Remove Worst Turtle's damage, if you want to call it over there. Even nil. It seems like any given player, this hell, essentially removed the amount of damage they were able to do during that game. And that's not to even include the, the f nearly 5,000 that Preds had done and the healing that Kana had as well. Just too much sustain for this composition as it started going towards the late game. Just not quite enough damage, unfortunately, for the Valhalla Valkyries. That's the end of the road for them, the Ari Scorpions. And fans of the Ari Scorpions rejoice. They're that much closer now to get back into the Smite Pro League for themselves. And we do have an interview standing by. We've got Gormizer to take over. Yeah, that's right. I got Davey standing by, and there's a lot. I mean, me and you were chatting a little bit while we, we set up for the interview, and a lot that I kind of want to pull at. So I guess the first one I'm going to go forward is, is you get a win. I know you immediately were talking about how you were like two big sets tomorrow. You, you already have your eyes on, on what opponents you think you'll be facing. What's the confidence levels like feeling for the Scorpions? Yeah, we're very confident. I think we can uh, outplay both teams, outdraft both teams as well. I think we've got uh, very good drafts. We had a good drafts yesterday too. You know, we just had a couple of sloppy mistakes. Let Sam get a big four-man <laughs> dunk wasn't uh, wasn't ideal. So yeah, we're very confident. Everyone's confident in each other. You know, we're all on the same page. So yeah, we just we're good to go. 
I know a lot of people are excited to keep watching it, especially after today. It was this is absolutely wild, and uh, hopefully you'll believe me that you said this, but called game number one sloppy. And I and I, I kind of felt you. I was like, okay, I could see it at the end. You guys were up such a massive amount of gold. What is it that, that, that in your mind, was the kind of conversion rate that gave the Valkyries that opening? I think, uh, you know, just because they're EU players, uh, you know, we kind of not disrespected them in, in that mid-game just because it was so far ahead. But, like, you know, they kind of punished us when we went for a red buff when I was in the left lane and... You know, we just called, wait, we'll siege mid, we're like 9k up, we can't lose a fight, yeah. all that sort of stuff. And then we had a bit sloppy there, in my opinion. You know, uh, a couple of boys didn't agree, but I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, yeah, we had a couple of sloppy moments, game one and game two, to be fair, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have died both, both times, really. Um, but yeah, we're, you know, we're good to go. We Decent set, so. Yeah. Always be improving, right? That's how you get to, to where you're going here. Eyes are set on the SBL. I do have one more question. This one uh, is less, I guess, about the team as a whole, more uh, about the guy that's laying in with you. Is this Sylvanas something I should expect in the meta, or is Preds just absolutely insane at these pulls? Yeah, Preds is uh, Preds insane. Um, Preds is insane support. I don't know why he gets so much disrespect, especially <laughs> in EU. Especially in EU, he gets so much disrespect. And uh, it's been a joy to play with him again. I used to play with him back in the day on console when he was a solo owner. And honestly, I think he's best support at this land outside of Gamma. Uh, I think he's the best support here outside of Gamma. So I just want to do a shout out to a couple of the EU boys back home if I can. So it's uh, April, Kokito. Um, Picarino, Ogibra and uh, Calvin, five players. They uh, give us a couple of EU scrims, you know, get away from the NA, NA ping scrims, they weren't fun. So, uh, you know, and that, that helps us a lot, to be honest, yeah. So it was kind of good. So I just want to shout out to them guys. It, was, it helped us out a lot, really. Yeah, gave you guys the training that you need. Obviously, it's paid off, right? You've made it pretty deep in the tournament. I know a lot of people, again, are excited to see how far you can push this. Congratulations again on the 2-0. We'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll kick it back to the desk for now. Yeah, thank you so much for that post-game interview. And a nice little shout to some of the EU boys for giving some good scrims over to the Yari Scorpion. Remember, this is an EU team, so trying to scrim against some of the NA teams, not the easiest thing to do and not the most fun having to play on large ping like that one. But it's able for the Yari Scorpions to at least continue on. And that now brings us to only half of the competition remaining, Mifflin. We walked into the start of this week uh, on Wednesday with 10 teams, and now only five of them remain to try and fight for these final two slots in the SPL. It'll be... The winner of the next matchup between the Gilded Gladiators and the Kowloon Wardens that will be facing off against the Aru Scorpions. And then, winner of that will have to await whoever ends up losing out in the top end bracket with the Niflheim Wargs and the Eldritch Hounds. Remember, that's a best of five that will end out our day. Still one more best of three to go before then, as said. Gladiators and Wardens now facing off. And the Wardens with a lot to prove, with a lot to, and a lot of drive to try and get up to the SPL. Elion and his squad once more trying to dig their way back up through one of these promotional tournaments to try and get that spot in the SPL. They got Tom, tough competition, though, going up against the Guild of Gladiators. Yeah, they do, but, I mean, there's some interesting dynamics in that matchup that I'm going to keep my eyes on. It, it has been very vocal from L.A. Own that he does not care about his dual lane and instead would rather sit in the solo lane, right? And when I think of Scary D, his play style is step up, fight inside the enemy tower, Play between the towers, approach the Phoenix. Is that going to be a, a line of play that, that Scary can really perform on with LAO on that side of the map so constantly? I'll be keeping my eyes on that dynamic. I think this is going to be a really interesting matchup and maybe one of the most important ones today, barring the actual promotion match. Yeah, obviously, the next match is going to be elimination, so we'll either see one of our top seeded teams in the Guild of Gladiators potentially on the verge of going home, or maybe even the Catlin Wardens who have gotten down into the loser's bracket since the beginning of the tournament have been making their climb through. We'll see which of these two teams comes out on top. Our second set of day, the Gladiators and the Wardens, starts right after this break. <laughs> 